Call the Finance Committee for Monday, March 21st to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, item number one. Appointment, Paul E. Nevins as a constable in the City of Brockton for a term of three years. Invited, Paul E. Nevins. You can step to the restroom. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Any questions? Council Monaghan. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Thank you. Uh, is your name Chairman this week? Uh, huh? Thank questions? you. Uh, yes, I just want to say that I've known this man for the, been a friend of mine for the past 40 years. That in itself ought to tell you about his character, and I really don't know if we'd be moving forward with a favorable recommendation, but <laughs> I'll make a recommendation, favorable recommendation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any other questions? All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended to the full city council favorably. Thank you, Mr. Nevins. Thank you very much. Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, Mr. President, can we take, uh, I make a motion to take numbers two through six uh, collectively, please? Second. Motion made and take items two through six collectively. Oh, and I would like to table them, please. Second. Motion made to take items two through six collectively this evening and table them. Seems to be some confusion on some uh, ordinances to do with the Women's Commission. So all those in favor? Thank you. Opposed? Motions are tabled. Item number seven. Order. Appropriation 350000 from Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Fiscal Year 2016, Municipal Police Services Staffing Grants. To City of Brockton Police Department, Municipal Police Services Staffing Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Chief of Police. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. This is uh, the police um, side of the same grant the fire department was in here before you on your the last finance committee meeting. Uh, the purpose of the grant is to fund police overtime for replacement shifts, the cost of walking beats in the Campello, Montello, downtown districts, conduct warrant sweeps, drug sweeps, firearm suppression, saturation patrols, community policing efforts, attend community-based meetings, and multi-jurisdictional deployments. Questions? Move to recommend favorably. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? Recommended favorably. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Item number eight. Resolve. <clears throat> members of the 21st Century Corp come before the committee of this council to update the council on the Rock Stadium and the Conference Center. Invited. Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Johnny Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Todd Marlin, Sr., Vice President, General Manager, Manager of Brockton Rocks, yeah. Mike Gallerani, Executive Director of Brockton 21st Century Corp, John Marion, <coughs> Chairperson, Brockton 21st Century Corp, Matthew Osborne, tre Treasurer of Brockton 21st Century Corp. Good evening. Councilors, I'm not sure who filed this. That's mine. Right. I'm sorry. Councilor Razak. Thank you. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, actually, the reason we filed this resolve, and I know a lot of my colleagues um, were on board with it, is really to give our, um, the residents a little bit of an update and to see where we're at with, um, you know, with B21, 21st Century Corp, the city, the stadium, Shaw Center. So if you can just give, fill everybody in as if they don't, um, you know, know about the um, about the board, B21, and a little bit about what you're doing. I know you, it's been almost a year that you've been here on the job, so if, thank you. Okay. So if you thank can just, you. Um, and I'm sure then afterwards we'll have some questions. And we did thank you for the information. We did get it in our mailboxes. So okay. this is something that'll probably go on to another meeting. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. President and Councillors. Good evening. Um, I guess I will start with talking about some of the things that has gone, have gone on in the past 12 months. Um, I came to B21. I think, it's, I think we might have passed the year anniversary. I'm not sure, but it's 12 months. Um, we've had an opportunity to do a lot of new things um, uh, that probably... Uh, will advance our economic development activities and lay in the, found, the foundation work for, for things to come. Uh, first off, I'll talk about how we're building some partnerships. We're building partnerships with the BRA and some of the banks in the community, and especially with uh, the City Office of Planning and Development uh, on a number of programs. Uh, the Main Streets program, which we've modeled after the Boston Main Streets program, uh, we're rolling out in Campello. Um, and we're moving forward, slow but sure, on, on getting that um, so that we can build and continue to build over the course of the next few years and then take that program 
out to other parts of the city, specifically downtown once we get the action strategy in place in, in Montello. Um, we have the facade program, which we're doing with the BRA. We're partnering with the BRA on that, uh, and that is to give building owners a chance to come in for loans, and zero interest loans, to be able to do the, fronts of the facades of their buildings. Um, and I can give you more detail if, if you want on that program. Uh, it's a very good program. Uh, we developed the business guide, which uh, there was a void in people not understanding how to navigate through City Hall or through the city at, at all, and even the, some of the state agencies. So uh, we put together a business guide that, that helps do that. And the mayor was good enough to have it translated into a, a Haitian Creole and Cape Verdean uh, so that uh, the minority populations could understand the guide without somebody having to translate step by step for them. Uh, and those are available on the city's website and they will be available on the new B21 website as soon as it's done. Um, we've also created the funding resource guide, which calls attention to 800, nearly 800 uh, federal, national, federal government and national grants that are available to nonprofits. Um, that's just a tool so that people that are looking for grant money will have an idea of where to go. Uh, and then hand in hand with that is a, a grant writing guide so people understand what, what good grant writing takes. Uh, it walks you through the process of being able to do that. Um, so, that so the past year is really about building the tools so that we can work with people and, and be able to help them without having to start over at square one with everybody. They'll have the, the toolkit to be able to go to and then come in and sit down with us and, and have a head start. Uh, we've been working with a number of companies, both in the city and outside the city, uh, for locations in Brockton. Uh, D.W. Clark is one in particular that uh, we were before you a few months ago for their uh, TIF agreement, and they're moving forward with their, their property, the old LeBaron Foundry property, which I think is a, is a major plus for the city to be able to get that uh, back to 100% and, and having it employing the number of people they're going to employ. And then there's others that are still in the, in the stages that are at the confidential level that I really can't tell you the details of their, their businesses other than they're looking to, <coughs> to grow. And then a couple of other new ones that came in from outside. Um, beyond that, I've become very active in some statewide uh, programs so that Brockton is at the, at the front and center on a number of things, including by being part of MEDC, I get to hear, that's Massachusetts Economic Development Council, hear things as they're happening versus catching it months later. And I'm on the board of directors of SEED so that we're tuned right into the, uh, so the loan programs. Um, and, and we've been very active, both going out of, out of the city for meetings as well as trying to attract the meetings into the Shaw Center or to the Massasoit uh, Conference Center so that Brockton gets visited by more people and people leave here with a good impression of the city uh, and those are statewide meetings. And the other thing that we've been working on and working a lot on is the uh, Working Cities Challenge, which uh, we're moving the conversation about homelessness in the city from so, some strictly a social service issue and moving it to the economic development issue. Uh, you'll be hearing more of that as we move on, but that's a, if we uh, granted the money by the Federal Reserve, we will, uh, uh, we've already gotten 15,000 to help us uh, plan our application and uh, design our program. But if awarded, we'll get 475,000 to be able to start dealing with the homeless issue. And we're targeting the subsector we chose for that, are the, based on the 600 children that are homeless that are in the Brockton Public Schools. So targeting those families and trying to be able to develop a program that ends family homelessness in the city. And it's a very long process. It's a three-year grant, and out of that, if we get 30 to 50 families squared away out of the 175 to 200 families that are affected, uh, we'll at least have a model to continue to build on. 
now to the stadium. Um, the Shaw Center and Campanelli Stadium were built 15 years ago. Um, we are at the point where we realized how much it needs because our tenant uh, entertainment management complex, the Rocks, have started to point things out. Prior to my coming, immediate prior to my coming to B21, the board elected to uh, have an independent uh, review done of the property, and a number of deficiencies were, were called out in that. Uh, some of them are extremely important. Uh, some deal with safety. Some deal with cosmetic, and there's a lot that's in between. We have to develop a strategy to be able to start to address those. And the B21 board, myself, uh, our construction consultant, as well as uh, EMC, have been working together to figure out the best approach. The conclusion we came to was because of the revenue stream needed, and if you read through the report, you see it's nearly $900,000 to fix it today. We do not have the ability to create that revenue stream like that, so we have to go about it strategically. And part of the uh, solution was to be able to reassign some of the rent balance uh, so that half of the rent would go into an escrow account, B21 would take some of its reserves, and we would start to move forward, especially doing the things that are essential that are safety concerns like the fire system. Uh, that's number one on our list, and we hope to have a resolve of that uh, in the next few weeks. Um, we're going back and forth what the, what the best solution is for that. And at the end of the day, we have to be sure that people that start coming to that stadium for those games on June 2nd, which is opening day, that they, they know the place is safe and that we know that it's safe. So uh, we'll be continuing to, to chip away at things, the big items as well as the small. We just, you know, I know that I, I approved the replacement of the floor in the refrigeration unit a few weeks ago and it's it's things like that you just you know it's the nickel and dime stuff but it does add up uh, and without doing them you're just compounding the the problems and uh, the little problems become very major problems so uh, we're going to continue to work on it and hopefully uh, we can get the, uh, the amendment to the agreement between us and EMC completed and, and be able to move forward. Questions? Yes. I'm going to ask you a question that I get asked all the time. Who owns the stadium and the Shaw Center? This is the, the guy that's been here for a year. Matthew, Matthew will take care. <laughs> Matthew Osborne. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matthew Osborne. I'm the treasurer for Brockton 21, uh, the Brockton 21st Century Corporation is my understanding that the B21 organization is the title holder to the improvements, which is the stadium and the conference center. So it's, so B21 is the, the owner of the leasehold interest on the land, and that leasehold interest contains the improvements, which is the stadium and the conference center. Okay. Um, I mean, the, and the reason I ask is we do get asked that. I get asked that all the time by my constituents. We, they say, um, you know, that we as the city shouldn't be in the, baseball business so I, that's why it needs to be um, clarified so now as far so I, I hear the plans thank you for um, getting some of the repairs done do you think that do you feel optimistic about being able to get them all done before before the opening day before the rocks opening day no uh, this simply is just not enough revenue that we can derive from this arrangement with EMC to cover all of those costs so what's the plan? What's plan B? I mean, how you're, you're still open without the repairs being done? We believe that the uh, money we have on hand in our reserves plus the money that will be raised uh, through our arrangement with the ROCs is enough to handle the life safety issues such as the fire suppression issues and such like that. Beyond that, we're going to be working with the ROCs to um, hopefully raise more revenue through their events and things of that nature. Okay, and, and now you, you, we talk about the rocks, but what about the Shaw Center? The, how is that, is that holding its own? How, how yep, is it forgi going? Forgive me, when I, when I make reference to the rocks, I'm actually making reference to EMC, which is the organization that leases both the Shaw Center and the stadium. It's, it is, uh, it's the same company in essence. 
Okay, so with the revenues, because I know the Shaw Center is open all year long, the Rocks is seasonal, so the revenue, revenues combined, is it whatever the Shaw Center brings in, is it all? They tracked on a separate basis. On a separate basis, yep. okay. Um, I mean, I'm going, to, thank you for the information. I'm going to look it over. We got it in our mailbox. I got it today. So um, I know my colleagues have questions, so possibly if um, you gentlemen can come back, at a, you know, possibly next month or we can, if we have a few more questions um, for you. But I'm going to pass it on to my colleagues. I know some of them had a few more questions. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rianieri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, uh, gentlemen, and I appreciate you uh, being here this evening. I was also one that signed on with uh, Councilor Azak, Councilor Borgard, and uh, Councilor Sullivan as well. And as you know, the, uh, uh, the stadium sits right in Ward 3. And uh, as you also know, I, I've been around for a good many years, so I know how this all, all came to birth some years ago um, when we took a piece of the Baron Sully Field, deeded it to the city of Brockton, because Mayor Units had a, a dream that he wanted to do something and, and bring to the city something a little different, and it was to offer a stadium. And at the same time, um, it was uh, Mr. Campanelli who came to the uh, forefront and also wanted to, um, you know, put his his money down and, and make it so that we'd be able to have a function hall at the same time. So um, I know no one likes to hear a history lesson, but that's just about how it all started. Um, and, and uh, I know as our colleague, uh, my colleague from Ward 7 asked the question of, um, you know, who owns the, uh, uh, the, the stadium, the, the conference center. Um, the title holder is, yes, 21st Century Corp, B21. But as I've always said, and Mr. Condon always knows, I've always said it, it's the city of Brockton's asset, and it's ours that we have to protect, and it's ours that we have to find ways to do what we have to do with and, and make, making maintenance work. Um, I, I will commend you, Michael, on, on uh, everything that you've got going. And since you came on uh, um, just about a year ago, I was there that, uh, at that meeting when you, uh, when you came on uh, through interview process and uh, saw fit that um, I thought you were a right fit for the city because I think it's probably the first time um, that, that in a long time um, that we're able to have somebody to um, also spend some time other than the person that was there before, which was Mary Waldron, who spent a lot of time um, you know, as the executive director, but to come in and to know that w what we're trying to do here within the city was economic development. At the same time, the mayor was trying to progress in, in doing what should have been done a few years back by putting a city planner in place to get all of this combined together so that we can have what we have. And I think some, somebody gave me some lovely reading material this evening in regards to things that, that are going to be taking place in the city, which I think is, is a great, great positive. Um, but it always comes back when you're talking B-21 and the 21st Century Cop, it always comes back to the stadium. Because I don't think, I don't really think that when the 21st Century Corp, and I always refer to it as the 21st Century Corp, I don't know, I just like the name a little bit better, but I, I don't think when the 21st Century Corp was born, and, and I have to say it was born back so many years ago by a colleague of mine who sits here now as, as a counselor, but under, under Mayor Fowler's administration, um, I think it was to be an economic tool is what he was trying to look at um, and had to put something in place because he, he unfortunately got the Condor office during some difficult times and was trying to find ways to, to bring revenue and growth into the city and it was not easy. Um, and I think it was also capitalized off of a plan that Mayor Sheets had in, in the city of Quincy. And uh, so off it went, but it never got off the ground the way it should have and for whatever reason um, always became that, that owner tenant to the stadium because that's the way um, the units administration had set it up um, that, that they got a waiver and made it funnel through that because of the corporation. Believe it or not, almost the same way the Plymouth County Correctional Facility Corporation built the Plymouth County Jail through Peter Flynn when he was sheriff and I was employed down there. It was the same type of a setup. It was something different with the monies entwined and sometimes they entwine, not the right way, but they entwined. Um, and I can say here that we've been fortunate that way, that not happening. Um, and we've had great people serve. This has nothing to do with the people that are serving the community for our questions and concerns here. I think it's, it's the fact that, you know, we've got to at some point come to a level of what we're going to, you know, do with and how we really handle 
you know, that stadium and that conference center. Um, and there's a plan that could hang out there if there was, if there was to be a casino to what they might want to think of what they want to do with it. But that's not on the table right now. It's still us. It's still us. Um, I, I do have, you know, one question of concern, which, which came to my attention, um, was the fact that, you know, maybe Mr. Condon may know a little bit more about this. I'm not trying to throw you into it, but um, I understand that the, the, uh, the assessment of, of that stadium falls under Brockton High School and is not in a separate loop of its own. And, and if that's not, uh, is that true, false? I mean... <laughs> Well, the, the land Thanks. is still the city's land. Right. Uh, it was, uh, the parcel was carved off um, at the time that the project began in the assessor's office. The deed is recorded, but the assessor's office failed because it isn't taxable in any case. The, the assessor's office failed to reclassify it from high school to part high school, part city. But there is a separate parcel at the, at the, uh, at the Registry of Deeds. There's a mortgage on that uh, property, which is the city's loan, and it's secured by... Uh, uh, by encumbrance on the on the property, uh, and there is a separate parcel at the Registry of Deeds, and somehow it uh, it slipped by the assessor's office 15 years ago, but that can be rectified. But, but it, it would not be taxable in any case. And, and and I would want it rectified, Mr. Condon, even for our, for our best interest, because if we ever reach that level, that maybe something we want to do something different than we want to offer it out for sale or some yeah, some other. Yeah, it, ne it needs to be corrected. And I don't know what steps we need to take, whether it's through council or not. But no, I don't. I don't think so. I think okay. you know, the action has already been taken. It was just a failure of the assessment. Okay, so it is it is being corrected because that that's that's a great concern I have, and and I, and I agree with you. I mean, it's city land, as I always keep saying, no matter what. And, and no matter who owns the, the deed or who owns the loan, whoever, it's still, it belongs to the city of Brockton and it's still ours that we have to deal with and we yes, have to and work the, with the city day. loan to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation, in fact, is a mortgage loan. It's a, it's a, it's a loan against the property and secured uh, with a registry filing. Right, right. But, I mean, uh, and I thank you, Mr. Conner, for that. I appreciate that. Um, but a anyhow, gentlemen, I just, you know, th those are you know, some concerns I have um, you know, with the stadium, I, I definitely have concerns with, with the maintenance of it because um, there's no doubt. I mean, were we in our 11th or 12th year with it, I believe, or 13th year, did you say, Mike, I think? Or 15th? Okay, so uh, we're, really, we're really taking a shot at, at, at a lot of things. The longer we go, um, the worse off we're going to be because other things are going to really continue to keep going. But, um, you know, I, I just think that we've got to we've got to find some way and somehow, and I and I don't know how, um, other than you know you presented a new uh, you know somewhat of a new plan here. Um, let me ask. Um, I know it it did fall over to somebody else now. Um, and what was the name of the the, the company that's uh, uh, leasing it now from us, the stadium? EMC. And and the previous owner. I mean, were were there any outstanding bills? I mean, did, were they all rectified? Were they all clear? Were water bills all cleared up? I mean, how did that all? How did we wash with with the other person said, see you later, I put the bat and ball down, I'm going home. Well, I'm going to answer that to the best of my knowledge because I've been here as chairman for two years. I think we need to be realistic about a lot of things, okay? And the discussion needs to begin to have a two-way discussion, not necessarily a one-way discussion. For the better part of two years, we've tried to be very proactive with regards to economic development. I know when the mayor came in, um, we talked tremendously, and he emphatically said building a team for economic development. We haven't had an economic development team in this city since I was 20 years old, maybe. Um, and the Brockton 21st Century Corporation is a part of that team. And it consists of the BRA, us, Rob May, um, and the mayor oversees this. Um, and Chamber of Commerce is very much involved. Bringing Michael in, everything has been proactive. What we've tried to do is be proactive out to the state, make sure that we're visible, make sure that we're going to meetings, and make sure that economic development, people know out there loud and clear, this is what we're doing, economic development. We're welcoming you in as a city, economic development. And also with the stadium, because that happens to be our little stepsister, okay? We need to take care of this stadium because it's an asset of the city. So as you go along and you have this facility that was built for what it was built for, okay, and it takes on different shapes as uh, you have a tenant and then you don't have a tenant and then you have a tenant. If you've ever traveled up in upstate state New York and you've ever looked at all of those ball fields up there that were created for um, minor league baseball, 
and you look at them and they're all deserted. Well, let me tell you something. That could be a reality, but it's not a reality in this city. What's a reality is, is that there's a tenant in there and that tenant is vibrant and the B21 is right there behind them to make sure that we're proactive with getting them ready for what they got to do so that they can get better and they can succeed. So you asked the question about before, right. we had somebody in there that we were working with and I was not involved in those discussions in, you know, directly, but I knew about them being on the board. And you know what, they tried to do whatever they could do, they tried, and, and they just didn't have the money behind them. Okay. And as a result, they weren't able to come up with what, they, what their obligation was. Yeah. But on the other hand, when we had this new tenant come to us, Chris English and his group, and at the time, the negotiator of this uh, was Joe Casey, and let me tell you something, there's nobody else at the table, okay? And here we have this facility, and these guys come up and say, look, we're going to take care of business from this point forward, okay? We're going to put money into this stadium. They revived it, I think over a half a million dollars, and they're doing business, and they're taking care of their obligation. I think it's very, very important to understand that when you have something to work with or nothing to work with, that's your reality, okay? And the reality is, is we have something to work with, and it's going in a positive direction. If we look back, we can look back on a lot of things. And I'm not so sure that that's necessary because there are many people that aren't at the table right now that go back. So I think right now we need to tend to business. We need to say, look, what can we do to make this successful? And that's what we're doing, making this successful. Thank you, John. And, and, and I wasn't trying to be negative to it. The only reason why I look back at it is because um, I have to answer to constituents, okay? I get elected every year, every two years, I should say, and those are the questions that they always ask me as well. Those are questions they asked several years ago. Those are the same, some of the same people that were very upset some years back when, when everything was in place and there was a forgiveness of debt at one time. If you can recall, I think you probably do. You've been in business here in the city for a long time. So I'm not trying to point a finger, I just wanted to ask the question to whether or not, and there was some other people that held the same type of, uh, um, you know, title, you know, and, and having the stadium that, that also, you know, could not pay the upfront bills that went along with it. And, and if they did and they walked away, okay, they did. That's, you know, I agree with you. Yeah, we move forward. We move, move forward. But um, sometimes we just can't keep having people in there. And if you can't, wa you know, pay it, then you just, you know, we move around and forget about it. That's, I totally that's agree with that. I'm a taxpayer both commercially and residentially. Exactly. And I absolutely agree with what you're saying. But the reality is, is that right now we have somebody in there that really wants to make this work. And this could be vacant. And it's not. And we're not going to let it be that way. Because we're going to do everything we can to work with them. And they're doing a lot to work with us. And, and, and I appreciate that. And that's, and that's what I want to hear. Because I think that's what we need. And, and let's hope that we can you know, do just what they want to do and we can keep it on a positive and we can keep it open for a lot more years than what we think. If not, then again, it still comes back to the city and it comes back to what we have to do and we'll, and we'll deal. We've been dealing with it. It's not like we haven't, we have. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when meals taxes, when that changed, we, we made sure that the increase went right to where it should have went and that goes to the stadium. And, and we had to listen to the constituents then too. But I have to, listen, I have to hear them, you know what I mean? I, you have to understand where we come from too. And, and it makes it, just I was out just last night just having a bite to eat at the 99 in Easton. And someone stopped me from Brockton and said, you know, when are we ever going to get resolved that we're never always paying for all the things that happen at the stadium? You know, I have to, I have to listen to it. But um, in any case, I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you answering my questions, and, and I appreciate all that you're doing. I appreciate everything that the 21st Century Corp is doing um, to work with the mayor and his economic team to, um, you know, to make the city somewhat vibrant. Um, we've got a lot going on, and, and it's going to take some time before it all comes into play. But I agree with you, we need to be all on the same path, and, and uh, believe me, uh, I, I want to make sure that happens, and I want to protect something that's right in my ward, so there's, there's no doubt about it that uh, I'm right there with you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Barnes. Yes, uh, just for clarification, I know you mentioned uh, earlier, and I, I'm going a blank on your name, uh, Mr. Treasurer. Matthew Osborne. Matthew, okay, all right, so you're on here too. So in the report that you submitted, um, the only owner is Brockton 21. All of the other people are, are how, how is that broken up on this, in this report? The ownership structure is summarized as this, the city, to the best of my knowledge, the city of Brockton owns the land. 
The land has been ground leased to Brockton 21. Brockton 21 used money from the city to build the stadium and the Shaw Center back in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. And then Brockton 21 in turn leased its interest to the original tenant. Right. Uh, I don't, forgive me, I don't know their name. Um, they're since gone, and then we have released it to EMC. Okay, so how many tenants have there been in that location in the last 16 years? Two. There, there could be a technicality there where there's more than one if the previous owner operated the Shaw's and, and Rocks as a separate interest, but uh, for all intents and purposes, there were two ownership groups. The previous one that was there for 12 years, two tenant groups. Wait, what? The previous one that was there from the start until a few years ago, okay. and the current one, which is EMC. Okay, all right. Um, and I, I apologize, it can get confusing. Yeah. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, I, I think it did. Um, I'll go through this though a little bit um, further too, if I have any questions, if, if I can just ask. But um, just kind of a cursory glance at some of these deficiencies, the deficiency list. How recent is this list? This, this, um, our, our report was completed during late 2014 into the spring of 2015. It was done over a number of months and there were some you know, delays during that period of time because of the, the heavy snow we had last winter. But it was completed by the spring of 15, if memory serves me correct. Okay. That sound right, Andy? Okay, so published last year, almost a year ago. Correct. Um, and I know, uh, Michael, you said that you guys are, you know, kind of pinch heading and trying to, you know, get some of the things up to par to keep it safe for <coughs> this uh, upcoming season. But um, I, I don't know if I'm looking for assurance that when folks come there that some of these things won't be an issue because I'm, like I said, I'm just, I don't want to go through all of the issues here, but there were a couple that really caught my eye um, that would, that could prevent someone um, from going. So how, how is that being addressed, I guess? I just, I just want a little bit more confirmation that, some, that these things are going to be addressed. I don't know how to answer that question yeah. other than we're, we're doing the best we can. Yeah. Um, with a focus on all life safety issues. Okay. And that's why we're trying to strike the agreements we can okay. using our own funds and with the tenant to make sure there's enough money to take care of all the, uh, the critical items in that. Okay. Um, sure, sure, please. Step up, please. Yeah. Uh, I'm with EMC. Yep. Um, Vice President, General Manager, just so everybody is straight, our fire system does work fine. We just recently had it tested. Okay. We have been having all of our quarterly tests. Everything goes through with the fire department. They review all of our reports. So everything still currently um, is satisfactorily working. It's just, I believe, and Andy would be the one to answer this more, um, issues that potentially into the future could be a problem more so than exactly right this very minute. That but there is a plan to address that so that they don't continue to deteriorate. That's exactly okay. what we're talking about in this document. Okay, that's, I think that's, that's what I was looking to hear. Um, okay, thank you on that. Now, also in the report toward the end, the, the graphs and um, some of the revenue, are these projected or are these the ones that have been captured so far? So, like the private community meetings, um, bar mitzvahs, barbecues, like all of these things that are on here, social events and all the revenue. Um, is this for this coming season? Those were the 2013, 14, and 15. So those were the actual numbers, and you'll see that you know there's an upward swing right. in every one of them. A couple of them, pretty major in terms of the, the improvement, and the others have not slipped back. They keep going forward. Right, weddings. So and, and we're working. The 21 is working closely with uh, EMC. This, there's two things in play here. One is the property management, which is beyond what B21 is really who we are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The other is the economic development side and, and all those events are part of the economic development picture. So we work closely with, I work very closely with Todd to talk through things and, and understand what's going on and how we can maybe explore other possibilities and potential events and as well as, as, well as um, attracting more meetings to the city so more people are coming in. You know, that's a normal economic development activity. Mm -hmm. So we're very much and very comfortable doing that. It's the, the other side that sometimes it's time consuming 
and we have to rely on people like Andy and, and Matthew has been great uh, and, and the B21 board has been great but it's when we are not property managers per se we, we are doing it because that's the mission that we were given a very long time ago and we're fulfilling it but um, so when sometimes when we're not hitting it hard it's because sometimes we have to stop and think about <coughs> what we're about to do okay so actually now to just just from my own edification and to clarify understanding that B21 <coughs> and the city of Brockton are not property managers so would the tenant uh, are the tenants right now maintaining the property and doing the property management stuff is that okay so there's not like an outside company kind of doing that okay all right I just want to make sure um, there was something else too I wanted to ask oh about the the statement in here about the high school baseball using the field what's the plan for that is it going to continue because in here it it just kind of it reads to me that um, the fact that they use it during peak season for other activities um, other kinds of games and things that could bring in revenue for folks to come in to watch an event at the rocks um, it says that the season coincides with the college baseball season and that precludes the stadium from being available for use for additional college teams and major league uh, uh, scouting um, that could be a potential revenue um, reduction. So what, what's the, are you all going to continue to let the baseball team use? H how does that work? It's, it's part of the agreement that the high school has access for all of their home games as well as their practices. So home games accounts, and practices. It accounts for 50 dates that they they have it in the in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, was it till five or six? Okay. Okay. And there is no no plan to stop that, right? Okay. Um. <coughs> And just for just another thing too, you said that you're working to get some new investors and get people's eyes on the stadium. And you said there are some things that you can't really talk about. But are there any like no, interesting? No, no, you're mixing two things. Okay, maybe. One is, is businesses that are looking to do things in the city. Not it has nothing to do with the stadium. Oh. It's new businesses that are coming in, and I, I can't get into the details because it's their private businesses. Sure, sure. Um, but there's some activity going on, and it's the challenge there. While I have that moment, is the, the kind of space that we need for some of them is very difficult mm -hmm. to to find in the city, so it, that's where the that's where the time consuming comes into play is finding the right building for the right user. Okay. And I've got one. It's a year. I think within weeks of my coming here, I sat down with them, talked about their growth their growth plan, and here we are a year later, and we still haven't found the building. Oh. The good news is they've hung in there with me and with the city. Okay. They really love being in Brockton and, uh, and we're trying and trying and every building we look at and either the price is way too high or the building doesn't fit the need. So. Okay. All right. And we are actively doing interstate um, communication and trying to reach out to folks, other companies that aren't really maybe up north or something like that. Yeah. The, okay. And the big thing is trying to get interest in the investor community to look at coming in and especially with our downtown plan. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's why uh, within the packet I, that you handed tonight, there's the real estate journal articles. That's part of the initial marketing push is to keep getting the Brockton message before the, the real estate investment community, the developers, the realtors themselves, because that's who we need to convince that mm -hmm. Brockton's got a good message. Mm -hmm. So that's that process. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for now. I'd like to add one thing to that. It's yeah. very important to project a pro-business attitude mm -hmm. and a pro-business environment. And that's one thing that we talk about all the time and how we deal with the businesses that are here and the businesses like Michael's been working with with a year. That's really important, that message, because these businesses, they have choices, and we want them to make the choice ours right here in Brockton. Pro-business, very important. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I uh, talk to the gentleman, I do also want to uh, thank Councillor uh, Azak for filing this, and I was happy to sign on. And to my colleague from Ward 3, uh, just for clarification, it wasn't a portion of Baron Selly Field. And I've said this, I've been on the Council 11 years. 
It's an insult to the Baroncelli family that Baroncelli Field was taken in its entirety and there was a promise made that the new Baroncelli Field would be created. It never was. The Albert Bar Baroncelli plaque was simply taken and put on the softball field at Brockton High. So I've said it many times and I'm going to continue to say it. Uh, there needs to be uh, something corrected on that. But with that being said, gentlemen, I want to thank you. I have sat on this board twice by virtue of being the City Council President. So I do thank uh, the men and women that volunteer. Uh, very few um, people realize that the, these are uh, uh, really professional, skilled people that volunteer. And I do concur with Mr. Marion that we need to uh, continue to have it thrived. With that being said, in 2008, I, I cut 100 grand from the budget because uh, Mayor Harrington uh, and I reached an agreement that that 100,000 would be used for a junior planner, and it was used. Um, so again, I mean, we do have the purse strings relative to this, but I do think it's vital. With that being said, um, the deficiency list that I, that I just calculated, and thank you for this, and I'm a numbers guy, um, it's about 26 grand, 26, 140 relative to the itemization on the conference center side, and I think you said, Mr. Osborne, well, 900 grand on the, on the stadium side. Is that, that's about, what, what, Okay, and in terms of the, um, and, and I do, I do again want to reiterate, thank you for being here, and hopefully we can a ask, uh, maybe set up quarterly meetings and get updates. I think that'd be 100% uh, uh, professional and the right thing to do. Um, in terms of, um, it was stated um, that, again, you're hemorrhaging money, right? Your upkeep, your repairs, it's just not meeting it. In terms of the reserves that were mentioned, could, could you tell us, and again, I want to thank you for this, it was in my, my mailbox, I'll, I'll vet it out tonight, but how much is in the, the, the reserves, Matt? So just, just as a, some background, um, I'm, I'm actually new, like John mentioned a moment ago that he's a lifelong Brockton person. I just, everyone should know that I'm new to Brockton. I didn't come down to this city until about 2013. It was through a job transfer. And prior to you saw that... The, you saw the light and you came here, so we thank right. you for that. That's right. And... Um, I've really come to love this city. There is a pride here that I don't sense in the other towns that I've worked in, the other cities that I've worked in. And it's going to make me sad the day that my employer comes knocking on my door and says, we're going to transfer you again. And I've really enjoyed my time here. And I want everyone around here to know that I take my responsibility on this board very seriously. And so when I joined Brockton 21 in, uh, I believe it was the beginning of 2014, you know, the first thing I did is I wanted to figure out what our fiduciary responsibility was uh, as an organization. And I went through, or we, I should say, went through all the documents that related to the stadium, its history, and what our responsibilities were. And part of that was the establishment of ongoing repairs and replacement reserves. And that was something that, to the best of my knowledge, we were supposed to be escrowing for, for many, many years. There was never enough money to do so. I went back and looked. There was just never enough. And so we probably have about $200,000 in general reserves. I'm doing that from memory, so I apologize if I'm up, but I'm not, I shouldn't be too far off. And those reserves are general reserves. They're not, they're not dedicated specifically just for the stadium. We, the, the previous organization, we just were never escrowing. So we started to look at what are we going to need to deal with the stadium. And that's when we went through the process of, of uh, interviewing a few different engineers, finding someone that had an expertise and an interest in doing an engineer's report. We found Andy, spent a couple of months doing that so we could assess what is needed here. There's a lot of water damage at this facility. And water, if anyone knows, has got to be the most, it's the most devastating thing to, mm. to any piece of real estate. Mm. Um, there, are, there are what I guess I would categorize as, I've heard from the professionals, some design flaws which allows for water to leak in a lot of different places. Um, so we, so your question is, like, have we been escrowing reserves historically? We haven't. This has been a focus for the last, you know, two years um, to try to do that. And there just simply hasn't been enough money to put aside a reserve. So this hundred thousand dollars that we're proposing that we use in conjunction with the money that'd be coming in from the tenant is from the B21 general reserves, okay. and that's to address some, you know, some of the immediate issues here. It, it t thank you for that. In, ter in terms of the. Um, and again, it, it may be in here. I don't know if it's, it's true. I was going to ask tonight respectfully for the financials, and, and I think when I peruse this quickly, there was a breakdown 13, 14, 15 relative to an itemization of certain events that were, were at the facility. I, I, I don't know if it's in here, but, it, but if it's not, I'd like to see a breakdown for the last few years relative to the financials. I sit on two boards. We do that all the time. Is it in here? Yeah. If it's just... 
current year, I, I, I would want to go back farther to vet it out, but okay. It's three years, John? Okay. In terms of the, uh, the monthly breakdown, in terms of the dollars, the rent, what, what is the rent? Is it 30 grand or something like that? 122,000. 625. 625. 625. Okay. The, the 31.250 was relative to the proposed amendment. Is that right? Initial term, base rent. So, so I guess, I guess I'm just trying to figure out in terms of, and, and again, I mean, I, I think you need to do what you need to do to, to sustain it, but I'm just trying to think from a common sense standpoint, if your nut is 900,000 repairs, how, how are you ever based on your monthly increments? How, how, What's the long-term strategy? Yeah, how are you ever going to get there? So, well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, here's my thoughts on a long-term strategy. Because you know, the counselor over here mentioned earlier that he gets the questions all the time about the stadium. And these questions are going to continue until a permanent solution comes about. And that's going to come by two ways. One, we're either going to solve it ourselves, or we're going to get to the year 2021 when the entire asset and the unpaid balance reverts back to the city at the expiration of the ground lease. So those are, one of those two events are going to happen. And we have an opportunity, I think, to resolve this well before 2021. If I have my facts straight, and there's people in this room that probably know better than I, I believe the original bond issuance that was made back in 2000 is going to be retired in full within the next 12 months, the money that the actual city is paying. If that is accurate, and if maybe this, is there anyone in the room that can verify that? Mr. Conan, Mr. Conan can. Mr. Conan, is that true? We borrowed $8 million loaned the $8 million to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation. So there are two different loan schedules. The city's loan schedule will be fully paid May 2017, 14 months from now. The Brockton 21st Century loan is the one that has that large balloon balance due coming in five or six years, whatever the end of that is, at the same time as the land lease terminates. And that will be a balance due at that point if they maintain payments of about $5.5 million. So Matt is right. And that's due to who, just a point of information, due to the city or due to? The city's loan is a general obligation loan will be fully paid. The $8 million that we loaned to Brockton 21st is a loan of the city to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation. That's due Corporation, to the city. Secured by a mortgage interest on the asset that was built there. Thank you. Mr. Connor, with that being said, I just had a quick question. Relative to the secured instrument, relative to the mortgage, I, I, and I think Dennis hit this on the head, um, if, if the assessor deemed that as Forest Ave, Brockton High School's Forest Ave, but the, the mortgage instrument should be the Lexington Ave, yeah. Of, yeah. or also known as Feinberg Way. Yeah. Is and, that, and, is and that how it is? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. The, the, the mortgage instrument is correct as to the parcel. The yeah. parcel was actually carved out. The only thing that was never corrected was the assessors neglected to, a, to correct their own database on that. It was originally high school property, all of it, and that, that was never done. But the filings with the registry of deeds and the, the UCC filings, all of those filings, are to the actual parcels with the actual addresses. Okay, great. Is it plausible, and maybe it's in here as well, but can the, can the council... And maybe we just need one copy through the clerk's office, but can we get a copy of that, the, the, no, the note, the mortgage, the deed? Uh, maybe not the I'd, note, I'd but have, the mortgage. We'd have to go digging for it. I Anything mean, that's a, on record? Yeah, it's on, it's on record, yeah. yes. Uh, it's also well described. I'm not sure what they submitted to you, but I think the, uh, the latest financial statements, if they've not been released by the board, they've been completed by the auditors, Brockton 21st auditors I'm talking about. And those documents every year, uh, they're available. I think they've been made available to the council. In the notes of those financial statements, all of these arrangements are pretty carefully and accurately uh, described. But I'll, um, I'll dig through my files, counselor, and see if I can get I think that'd be helpful, that Jay, be. because, again, a lot of people say, who's the owner? If we have a copy of the deed, even if it's just one in the clerk's office, we can make reference. Deed, yeah. I would say deed, lease. If it's yeah. on record, they probably recorded it, right? If it's a ground lease, That's and then also the uh, the mortgage, that'd be that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, in terms of um, the um, the parking, um, 
you know, again, I've been here 11 years, and I was always under the impression that there was a split, right, on the parking for the games and the events. Um, I mean, I went to the Willie Nelson, Bob Dylan concert, so it's been a while. But I mean, is is because I'm getting a lot of complaints from over the years from people on the school side, thinking they're not getting their fair share, they're getting shafted. So what? What can you explain that to me, sir? What the it, breakdown is? Interesting, you say that because when we presented them their yeah, check this yeah. year, they had no idea why we were giving them a check. So well, and they, you're you know, not talking I, the same I'm not people sure I'm what happened about. in years past, <laughs> yeah. but I know in this year we gave them a check. It's it's split between B21 and EMC, B21, and then the split between B21 and the school department. What was that dollar amount? Eleven and some change was the total that we had, so they got just fifty five hundred okay and then and then again, just to refresh my memory, um, and this will be my last question, Mr. Chairman, what, what, can you remind me again what the pass through was on the Trinity Financial project? There was a pass through where b twenty one was involved, right, and I for the life of me can't remember. Can you explain um, what that what that was? Because someone called me on that today, Jay, and I couldn't for life remember what it was. Probably want an attorney to do with this, but here's my well, understanding. Well, just, just dummy it down but then. My understanding dumb, of that was that, that that was a grant uh, from the um, state, right. and they couldn't make it directly to Trinity, so they made it to the city. Right. The city couldn't make a loan directly to Trinity, but we could make a grant to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation. That's allowed under their enabling statute. So that's what we did. We passed that grant of the uh, state money through our coffers, oversaw the administration of the disbursement of it to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation and they in turn made it a loan which doesn't actually get repaid. It becomes converted to a grant if Trinity maintains its commitment over the life of the mortgage and creates a sufficient amount of affordable yeah. housing. I think that's how it works. But we couldn't deal directly with Trinity in that fashion. We just didn't have the power as a city to do it. That's right. Brockton 21st could. That's right. Thank you, Jay. And the last thing, just to circle back on the parking again, this year you said it was about six grand to the schools. Can we, can we get the last, and I know you've only been here 12 months, but can we get uh, through, the, through the clerk's office again a, a breakdown of what that was in prior years? Maybe go back five years or so. That'd be good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, before I have to apologize, I interrupted you to get that answer from Jay. Did you have anything else to say about how we get out of this? If you want to listen to me, sure. With I cut the, you short on that, and I apologize. I was just going to finish the thought that with the obligation to the taxpayers retired next year, at that point, the taxpayers have been paid in full, and all that remains now is an intercompany loan, if that's what you want to call it, between the city of Brockton and B21. We're all on the same team with the same objectives of making sure, just as John mentioned, that we have a full stadium, not an empty one. That loan, that loan is what burdens our cash flow. That loan goes away, we can use uh, pretty much all of the income from EMC, the tenant, towards maintenance and maintain the stadium. Is it enough to maintain the stadium? It's not going to be enough to cover the 900,000, but it's going to be certainly make a dent in what we need. And I just think about how if, if the stadium's going to go back to the city in 2021 anyway, you're going to inherit a loan balance you're going to have to forgive at that time. I know no one wants to hear that word, forgiveness, but that's nonetheless what's going to happen. Why not do it now and jumpstart the process of freeing up cash flow from the tenant so that we can use their cash flow as opposed to taxpayer cash flow to maintain the stadium as much as we can? I think there's an opportunity before us this time next year when those bonds are paid in full and the taxpayers are paid in full. That's where a long-term plan can be made because I think that point is coming eventually. And we might, now's the time when we could do it without waiting until 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Council Farwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. And uh, uh, I do appreciate all of the contributions of the 21st Century co uh, Corporation towards economic development. But I think I want to segregate my remarks tonight by Rock Stadium 1 and Rock Stadium 2. And Rock Stadium 1 has nothing to do with any of you here, but so that we don't repeat the past, let's take a look at what happened. The stadium was built. In 2001, an order was filed, and basically the city council walked away and said, Mr. Mayor, you enter into an agreement with B21 any way you want, whatever is reasonable, and we're satisfied. And the council stepped away. 
And I'm not saying that over the years anything major could have been done differently, but when you have 11 people who represent various wards and four at large, the collective wisdom and the collective experience of those elected officials may very well have contributed to a better outcome. Two years after that stadium was built, and thanks to the archives <laughs> of the enterprise, and I think it was in October or it was uh, October 2, 2003, there's an article in the paper saying second season revenues down and the city has to dig deep into its pockets to meet the payments. Now, full-grown adults at the 21st Century Corporation and full-grown adults on the city entered into an agreement. It's nice to talk about teamwork and how we're all on the same team, but there's also a corresponding responsibility for all of the team members to fulfill their obligations. If it couldn't be done, it never should have been signed and accepted. I can't go to the bank and take out a loan and say I'm going to pay back a certain amount of money over time and then go back to the bank and say, oh, you know what, gee, I, I'm awfully sorry, I can't do that. My revenues coming into my family aren't sufficient to meet the mortgage payments. So basically what happened is, when Mr. Condon can either verify it or, uh, or comment, we took the hotel and meals taxes which could have gone to schools, which could have gone to police or fire, which could have gone to libraries, and we had to apply that revenue, appropriate that revenue, to pay for the bond. Now, it's nice that it's going to be paid off next year, and I think that is a boon for the taxpayers. Personally, I think, given what the mayor has outlined, there are some critical needs in the schools and elsewhere. I'm not so sure. Uh, that we're going to be able to uh, necessarily use that 400000 and make a huge difference, but it will be a difference. What I don't understand, and I looked at your tax filings just for the last three years, because frankly I got blind with the font that's on the Internet. In 2012, year ending 630-2012, you reported a $558,466 deficit after revenues versus rentals, rental expenses. The next year it was $957,721. And finally, on June 30, 2014, it was $655,250. That's a deficit based on revenues versus expenses. Why on earth would we sign an amended lease through 2020 to Mr. English? What's, what's going to change? You're still going to be woefully behind in terms of the revenues coming in from Mr. English and his organization versus what you really need up there. And now you'd like to have the whole matter forgiven. And I, and I, you know, forgiveness is part of the American spirit. I just see my role as trying to be somewhat of a guardian for the taxpayers and for taxpayer dollars. And I just don't get it. I mean, I, I've looked at this every which way to try to be charitable. Uh, there's still $200,000 from Rocks One, apparently, outstanding for water and sewer. That's never been paid, so the taxpayers lost that. $600,000 in prior administrations was diverted to uh, pay for either Rocks expenses or stadium expenses uh, and conference center expenses and, and for the loan. And I just think we've reached a point where you, you talk about having the place go dark. No, I don't want that, but I would like to try to find a tenant that at least somewhat meets our expenses with revenues coming in. And uh, did we do an R and Michael, you wouldn't know this, but did we do an RFP and solicit bids or recommendations for, for someone to come into the conference center? Uh, Councillor, some of what you said is correct and some of it is, is, not, is right. not correct. Let me start with the p places where I think it's incorrect. Um, the forgiveness that you spoke about was an interest payment that was due from the corporation, the Brockton 21st Century Corporation, to the city. It wasn't money due from the rocks or to the rocks. And so that forgiveness was by the city under the mayor's authority, under the agreement that you said the council gave him the authority to strike. And it, excuse me, it was of an interest payment on that $8 million loan. Not, not a principal amount, but the interest amount, and it had nothing to do with the amounts that the Rocks owed to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation. The second place where there was uh, some confusion in what you said is that from the very beginning, at the time that that original $8 million loan was authorized, the documents that supported that decision anticipated that the hotel motel tax would be used in order to supplement the amount of money that was likely to come in off the lease payments 
from the stadium and the Campanelli Center to the Brockton 21st Century Corpor Corporation as it tried to make the loan repayments. That's why the um, original loan document said it could be a loan or a grant to the corporation. So essentially the hotel motel tax to a restricted amount and the way that's calculated is described in the loan agreement. It's restricted to 90 percent of the first 500,000 of hotel motel tax and 50 percent of anything above 500,000 is reserved in order that if there is insufficient revenue coming into the corporation to make its loan repayment to the city that they wouldn't fall into default. The city's concern in this project from the beginning has been that the um, at the time the project was initiated there was an independent study com com uh, commissioned. The consultant sized the potential market especially for the Shaw Center as being much greater than it proved to be. But there was never any certainty that all that revenue opportunity from that parcel of land as a convention center or conference center and baseball center would be sufficient to fully repay the $8 million loan. But the elected officials at the time were concerned that they didn't want to simply make a grant of that money to the corporation because if it were wildly successful, they wanted to participate in it and get some of that money back. So that's why the deal was struck the way it was. But the hotel motel tax was always anticipated to be committed to avoid default. And the concern about default was if the corporation ends up in default, the whole thing comes back on the city, as Matt said just a few minutes ago, and we weren't equipped to take care of it either. The Brockton 21st Century Corporation was at least a mechanism to have an independent management of it. And in its charter is the obligation to look not just for economic development, but try to enhance the image of the city. And the project was viewed as much as economic development as an image enhancement. Other than that, I think the, the loss situations you're describing are largely due to this uh, this project and depreciation on the asset is, you know, that's a non-cash expense, but it's a, an expense nonetheless. And as that depreciation gets set against the corporation's revenues, they show a loss for tax reporting purposes. And that's been true for many, many years, ever since this project came on its, on its books. When the corporation first looked to get a tenant there, I don't know if they did a formal RFP. There weren't that many minor league baseball operators out there, but the board at the time did look at several, several different models and a couple of different operators to be its tenant there. One was with the Atlantic League, which is, I think is still an organization which is still in existence, and one was with the Northern League, which was an independent. Both of those were independent, not affiliated minor league teams, but independent minor league teams. The group they selected was a group which had as a track record wherever they'd run franchises, they were either number one or number two in attendance in each of their leagues. And their season was a better season for the needs of the city because their season began toward Memorial Day and ended not long after Labor Day. And that beginning of the season, April to the end of May, was important to the high school team because part of the original deal of the land being turned over to the city was that the high school place would, the team would have a place to practice and play. So that's kind of where it went all, uh, was all wrapped together. It wasn't a formal RFP, but they did solicit conversation with a number of different leagues to get the best tenant possible. The problem, as you correctly pointed out, Councillor, is there has never been enough money coming in off the project to take care of all its needs, especially so long as the $8 million that the city provided as a loan to the corporation was on a loan repayment schedule as opposed to a grant. We could have structured it differently in the beginning. We could have said, here's a grant. We want to participate in some fashion as you're successful and had it more contingent. We could have had a higher lease payment because the land lease is only $10. I mean, one of the options come up in 2020 or 2022, whenever that whole thing comes due, is to renew everything, to extend the loan payment out. I mean, if things were going better, I think that's what you'd do. But the original loan is anticipated it would be paid in that year, that the $8 million would have come back to the city. And at that point, that the $10 lease would go to whatever the market rate for lease payments would be at that time. So those are the best laid plans of mice and men back in the year 2000, and it hasn't, uh, hasn't come to pass in any way, shape, or form. And since the beginning, everybody involved has been struggling a way to, be, to find that we could keep activity going there. And for a period of time, uh, the Shaw Center has always been somewhat prob problematic. It hasn't uh, participated in revenue development as, as everybody had hoped, I don't think. But baseball, up until about 2007, 
was a bang out success up there. You could go up there 2005, 2004, 2006. The city has changed since then. It stopped uh, supporting its baseball team probably about 2007, and that's why they got in such trouble. You know, the recession came in then. But for a long time, you could go up there, there'd be 3,000, 4,000, even 5,000 beyond capacity with people out on the outfield fence and, you know, buying beer and hot dogs on a Friday and a Saturday night. So for a long time, baseball performed just as we had hoped and better. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore, and you're certainly not going to get that kind of success with amateur baseball for, you know, half the number of dates that we had when it was a minor league team. And the Shaw Center are healthier than it was when it first started, but not contributing as to the extent we would have hoped. But there's never been any forgiveness of uh, monies owed by the city, uh, to the city by the rocks. We haven't collected all of those water and sewer bills, uh, but the new owners weren't responsible for them, and the only way we could collect would be against a entity which no longer exists through civil, civil action in court. There's really nothing to act on, there, act on there. We've always been concerned about keeping activity going. Well, and I, and I appreciate that explanation. I, I guess what I take from that, which is a bit troubling, and that is we entered into an agreement for an entity, B21, to pay back $8 million, but in the back of my mind, we better have a fail-safe because it probably isn't going to happen. And, uh, and yeah, that's, and that's not, not that it was probably not going to happen, but in the event that it didn't happen, we would use the hotel motel tax, which had never been budgeted, it had always been free cash creating in the city, and use that as a mechanism to ensure they wouldn't fall into default. And in, to that extent, it's worked. It's not been successful because there hasn't been revenue above and beyond that, but it has, it has worked. They're not in default on their loan. The only time they were was in the very first year of operation when that interest payment was coming due, and it was a big one. And the Shaw Center was not built at the same time as the baseball stadium. They ceased construction on the Shaw Center so that they could begin baseball. And so therefore, they lost two years really of operation in, in terms of Shaw Center revenue. And the decision was made by the mayor at the time, that's just an interest payment on that loan. We'll treat it as having been paid, we'll forgive right. it. Are they in default on their loan now? No. B-21? No. no, they are not. Okay. And isn't that because we give them a quarter of a million dollars a year? Don't they simply pay it back to us? Well, in a roundabout way, don't we give them 250 grand? Yes, and we they do, but not, for, but not for loan repayment, Councilor. It's, it's for the economic development operation of the, of, the, of the entity, plus some money which they use to pay on uh, operating expenses for insurance, et cetera, for the, uh, for the stadium. But, but if they, they have a pot of money that comes in during the year, and part of that is $250,000 from it, us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And their payment to us yearly is? It's uh, the loan payment is $600,000 to the extent it's available, and it's about well, let's see, 50% uh, 90% of 500,000. That's 450, and 50% of everything on top of that, we get about 750 in hotel motel. So there's $575,000 available to subsidize that hotel motel tax. But the two are not the same. One is for economic development, 150. One is for helping them with the stadium, 100. And then the rest of it is coming on a contingent payment on the loan repayment. If everything blew up, yep. everything blew up, killed the 21st century corporation, so we don't like these guys, we don't like what they're doing, you'd have a stadium sitting out there empty, you'd have a conference center sitting out there empty. If you sold the conference center, there was a $6 million grant from the state, which according to the terms of the grant, we're supposed to repay if we don't continue to use it in the fashion it was intended. So I don't see that that's a solution in any way, shape, or form. But if that's what you want to do, we can certainly try it. You can stop paying them $250,000 a year. You won't get the benefit of their economic development activity. And I don't know where we gain on all of that. Well, I, I'm tempted to say name the five largest projects that B21 has brought in in and of itself to the city in the last 23 years, but I'm not going to go there. I think we'll, we'll I think you just did, Councilor. I think okay. we'll, have, we'll have another meeting and we can, yeah. we can thrash that out. But I, I look at everything that's transpired with liquor licenses that couldn't be issued because there were outstanding amounts owed under Rocks One. As of last night, it looks like there's between nine and twelve thousand dollars owed by Rocks Two for 2014-2015. I assume that will be that will be paid. Yes, and the other thing is is that the reason why is that there's negotiation based on what was prior and what's present, so they're just working that out, and Todd's been in communication with it. So that's an ongoing communication that we're very well aware of. And the other thing I'd like to mention, Councilor, I thought you were very articulate of what to point out for the constituents, for the taxpayers, of which I'm one in two areas, both commercial and private. Uh, the legislation that was created for Hotel Motel in 1986 specifically talks about beautification and cultural activities. 
And I think that the essence of what this was created for has all of that written in the legislation. So I, I understand you're looking for flaws and, and, and ideas where, you know, maybe this could have been better, but here we are today. And I can tell you that in the last two years, we've moved so far forward and we're going to continue to move forward. And they're going to be successful because we're, we're allowing them the tools to be successful. But you're being, and I don't want to get into an argument with you, but you're being successful because taxpayer money is helping you do what you need to do. And we're, are we not paying the electricity up there? Under this new we're lease? Not de we're not debating that the reason that no, we Are we not paying the electricity up there? Yes. For the tenant? Okay. Yes. And on your tax filings, I noticed somewhere between 4000 and then down to $2,700 for telephone expenses. That can't be just the two people in the, the B-21 office. Are we paying the telephone charges up there? I can't speak to, I can't speak to that. Well, that's what, that's what it says in the form. In, in, 2000, uh, in 2012, year ending June 30th, you wrote off $4,785 in phone charges. It can't be just for the B B-21 office. The only, the only phone bills currently being paid are for the office. And it's like well, that's I, 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 on two thousand dollars a year. That's I, the only phone bill. I can o I can only go by what's on here, sir. I don't know. I'm not sure what happened before my time, but I can tell you t can today those are the bills that we're processing. I, I guess, and, and Michael, you were very honest when we attended a meeting. There was uh, Councillor uh, Azak and Councillor Ian Erie, Councillor Monaghan and I, uh, and Councillor Ian Erie, and you said that you had absolutely no experience running a stadium or a conference center. And if we're going to get into a concerted effort to bring that, that conference and stadium up to speed, I, I really think we need to have some expertise in facility management, particularly stadium and conference center management, uh, in order to, uh, to make sure that we expend money properly and protect the city assets. And again, I thank you. I will probably read the information that you've presented tonight and have some more questions. I do think we're all on the same team in terms of preserving an asset. Uh, I am troubled by the fact that whether you agree with a casino or not, if the casino comes to that area of the city, then I think the stadium and, and uh, conference center take on new meaning, but yet apparently we're obligated through 2020 or 2021 to Mr. English, and I don't know if that, has, that contract mm -hmm. has an escape clause. Do we, can we give him a year's notice and withdraw from that if suddenly we were able to do something that was very viable for the city? And, and you may not know that. I don't it was know. Negotiated. The term was the, is the term. The term is set. So we're, we're wedded to that through 2021? Unless we have a mutual agreement to, to exit it, yes. All right. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Beauregard. Good evening. I'm looking more closely at some other issues here. I realize that uh, the resolve said that uh, you were here for the Rock Stadium and the Conference Center, but it seems like there's some other things lacking. I mean, one I noticed when um, you had the meeting uh, earlier this month, uh, that it was held during the day, and to me it should have been open to the public because it has been the taxpayers that have been affected by, how would I say it, this um, not so properly functioning operation in some instances. It's been costly uh, over the years, and having been in the facility many times, both of them, I've noticed some different things that could have been upgraded, et cetera. Another thing I wanted to point out, you had mentioned and highlighted here, we received this report, which I felt, quite frankly, we should be receiving reports more often from the 21st Century Corp and making them available to everyone that is interested in knowing where, uh, how would I say it, our investment is going, and I'll put that in quotes. Um, also, what else I was concerned with here is I looked at the list of the board when I attended the meeting, and there seems to be a lot of highlighting with vacancies, and that concerned me too. Does that mean that people aren't interested in being part of the board? Have they been invited? Another thing I wanted to highlight too is we only see in a couple of uh, names here, resident, and it seems to me that the community that is most affected by this should be included in it. The other thing I want to mention while I'm speaking here is we talked about 
the um, investment of downtown and your participation in it. Yet, um, I have a question. I wanted to know if Gary Leonard was a member of your staff of the 21st Century Corp. Gary Leonard is the Main Street manager uh, paid for using CDBG funds that come through the uh, Redevelopment Authority. Okay, so technically he would fall under BRA. He's housed in B21. He works with me. I give him guidance and, and his focus is on Campello, not on the downtown. Okay, that's, that's a little bit confusing too because I remember when he was hired, he was supposed to be the Main Street manager, but uh, you weren't around for that, so I won't focus on that because uh, I, this is something that I'd like to point out is on Tuesday, December 1st, when there was a planning department meeting in 2015, planning board, excuse me, may, you know, the public could attend, and there was a discussion on the site plan approval for 121 Main Street, and right now it seems that that's having a little bit of an issue. It just seems that a lot of what the 21st Century Corp has been affiliated with seems to be lacking in organization. We seem to be lacking how would I say, the information that, uh, and communication, which has been mentioned several times here. I mean, I'm excited that the stadium exists and the Shaw Center exists. I don't believe there's been enough marketing done to promote it, and I believe that, yes, you are a small staff, but once you have a board, the board is supposed to be active in, how would I say, it, contributing their skills, their assets, to make it uh, more effective and powerful. And, I mean, there's several nonprofits in the city I could highlight that have hardworking boards that extend themselves. The other, um, what I want to mention also with this is, I'm a little confused now, too, because you're mentioning all these activities that you listed. I'm very excited about the economic development piece, and I hope that you'll be coming up in front of us shortly with uh, some of these proposals. But this last part here is um, about fundraising, and I guess that's throwing me off a little bit, too, because a lot of the nonprofits that have fundraisers aren't getting a large sum of money for their operation expenses. And this has me a little bit confused, too. So if you could elaborate on all this, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, our strategy um, with regard to outside funds is to look for partnerships versus fundraising. Yes, we're having an event. That event is, is dual purpose. One is to use the Shaw Center and show it off to an audience that may otherwise not get to see it uh, with the kind of event that attracts a different crowd. Um, and yes, you know, there's a fee attached to attending that event and the, the goal is to use that money and plug it into specific programs which the board will decide with me uh, how much that, where that money goes. It all depends on how many tickets are sold, obviously. But beyond that, it, I go back to, we're looking at partnerships. Um, you know, the facade program is an example. We, we brought one of the banks in to work with us on the facade program so we could extend that program beyond what the CDBG monies allow. Um, and just always looking for new opportunities with different partners. Um, you know, the internal partners with the BRA and the, and the city. And uh, we do things with the chamber. Um, so we're always... Uh, you know, Massasoit and, and Bridgewater State, we look to do things with. Um, again, there's been a process for me getting to know who's who and what's what and what's been done before. Don't want to repeat mistakes from the past and, and always looking to, to shape new ideas. Um, so that takes some time. Um, we're up to the challenge, though, I can tell you that. Uh, and, and with regard to the board of directors, I will tell you, this is a dynamic board of directors. The gentlemen on each side of me um, are incredible contributors, um, as are the others. Now, there's some that are more than, more than some of the others, um, but that core group, that executive board of, the, of B21 is just incredible. And they're available to me at a moment's notice. They do the city proud. Um, they're all good people. Uh, that care about the city first and foremost, they, that's their interest, is making the city better and using B21 as the tool to get to that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Monahan. Yes, thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. 
Um, okay, we heard a lot tonight about finance and what happened in the beginning and all this stuff rolled in here tonight. Um, and obviously the biggest problem is revenue. Um, so I think Council Fowell mentioned about stadium uh, maintenance, running events. What is your plan to bring in this revenue? Now, number one, before you do that, is what is your plan for maintenance in the, we talked about this at your uh, meeting where we attended that day. What is your plan to have a maintenance program in place so you won't have all these problems down in the future? What, who, we were, I think we're talking about maybe having the city, was it may, maybe the building department or something like that. What is your plan to address all these issues with the maintenance, number one? I think the, the first element of the plan is to prioritize um, and it will reflect much what, what uh, Mr. Boykos has already done for us where the essential items get high priority. Uh, the revenue stream that supports that is that's why we're amending the, the looking to amend the lease so that we can, we will have a, re, uh, a reserve set aside every year for those purposes. We'll be using that reserve to, to keep chipping away at that list. It's just, that's the way it's, it has to be because we have to, you know, the, 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 syst the fire system alone, if we choose to replace it, is approaching $60,000. That's what we're talking about in half the, uh, the rent that we're looking to have as a set aside. So it will, it will be used up much quicker than it will come in. Right. So we have to be cognizant of that. Uh, hopefully, through by working directly with EMC, we'll be able to enhance the property's viability as an event uh, venue, um, do more concerts. They, are, they generate good revenue, you know, not just the parking, um, but just ticket sales. So it's that, is maximizing the potential of the stadium and looking at, and the, and the conference center, and looking at them as Brockton's core element of its visitor industry. Now, I don't think any of us th would think that Brockton has a real visitor industry, but we can create it uh, with or without the casino. The stadium and the conference center, as well as the Massachusetts Center, are great elements to build on. Those are the types of things. And again, it's, it's strategic. Uh, again, I've been here a year. I'm still figuring out where we are on a lot of things. Um, but that's the goal, is what happens if this happens, what happens if that happens, and be able to move forward. So uh, I think it was said about, you know, five, the last five year, 25 years or five years, what has B21 done? I will, I will graciously ask you, ask me that question in five years and I'll tell you what these five years and I'm, I'm sure the answer will be different than what you think it is today for the past five years. Right. But I'm, not, I'm just talking about today. Yeah. Now you need those, the, the air conditioning systems we haven't even been looked at. You had nobody over the years, they had nobody maintaining them, looking at them, checking them out. That's why it's going to cost you It's what it is now because you have had no maintenance, nobody's looking at filtering, whatever, all these different things. Do we have somebody or plan to make sure that this is going to be done year after year, okay. year round, checking out all the systems that need to be checked out, everything uh, in the stadium? Because you're going to be at the same point again. Yes. What is the plan to do that? That is what you need. You need a plan right. now right. to take care of that. Do you have something that's, and that's it's just going to get fixed, but then you're going to be at the same boat that in five years if you don't have anybody maintaining that stadium? And that's what we're working on is figuring out who the vendor is going to be to maintain, to, to assess that HVAC system fully and decide if it can be uh, brought back to 100% or what it's going to take or is it a replacement. And also part of that is having a maintenance program going forward. It has been neglected. Right. Yes. I mean, but more, I can't, more than I can't, just that. I can't go back 15 years and fix that. It's not possible. So we have to look forward from today. Exactly. And yes, uh, yeah. we'll have a maintenance program. Yes, we're going to address that fire system. Yes, we're going to chip away at all the other things. If we could just have the revenue stream to be able to do it. You know, if you said here, Michael, here's the million dollars you need, we'd get it all done by the opening day, so to speak. But it just, that's not possible. We all know that. So we have to be very strategic on how we do this, and we will be. I mean, everything, everything I do always has a desired outcome. <clears throat> if you ever sat in a meeting with me, you'd hear me say, why are we here? What are we doing this for? And with the stadium, it's, we know why we're here. We know what we're doing. 
we just got to move it forward. And, and um, yes, in a perfect world, there'd be a property manager. But again, that's another 70 or 80,000 that I'm not, I, I don't know, I can't answer what, what the, uh, the return on that would be. But right now, this is what we have, and we're going to make the best of it because that's what we've been asked to do. Uh, and, and as far as promoting the stadium, events at the stadium, events like this here, I mean, that's a good thing to have. But you had what you have here, the uh, Frank Sinatra night dinner. That's a good thing to have. Who is going to be in charge of doing that, running? Is it, is it um, B21 or is it? We'll be working with EMC to develop new strategies. Yeah. Yes, ultimately, yeah. EMC is the, is the tenant that's responsible for coordinating all that. Now, there's a lot of outside entities that will want to rent the facility for different events. Those concerts are not EMC concerts. They're someone else coming in and renting the Probably stadium not, or, yeah. the, or the conference center for the concerts. Yes, they coordinate the weddings and the private parties and, mm -hmm. and those things, yes. Yeah. Okay. But so, and how we promote it. I mean, working closely with, with PCDC, the yeah. Plymouth County Development Council, which is the regional tourism agency, to get Brockton and especially the stadium and the conference center and become more of the story of Plymouth County. Because as we know, my hometown gets a lot of the attention in Plymouth County for tourism. Mm -hmm. We can get, Brockton should get some of that. Right. The stadium and the, and the conference centers are our, are our avenues to get that kind of attention. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Lally. Oh, excuse me. Councilor Rodriguez was first. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, guys. Uh, I just have a quick question, um, and then I've got other comments that I wanted to make. Um, you made it sound like um, the promotion of these events that you're promoting, uh, that EMC is actually promoting to bring in concerts and a variety of other things. Uh, you almost gave it a perce uh, the perception that it's actually going to benefit the city itself. Uh, not because of the concert, but the, the uh, revenue generated from these concerts are going to benefit the city when in fact it's not. We, this is something that... The this some there is a pass through. The we get a piece of that revenue and it passes back to the city. Yes. A small, a small piece? Yeah, in the parking, and, you know, it's all, it may sound nickel and dime, but, you know, to quote Everett Dirksen, you know, a million here, a million there, after a while you're talking real money. So a thousand here, five thousand there, after a while it starts to chip away at the bottom of that list that we have. You know, there's things that are a few hundred dollars, there's things that are a few thousand. You have that kind of revenue stream, you can fix the things before that five thousand dollar problem becomes the fifty thousand dollar problem. So if a concert accomplishes that, then great, from my, from my perspective. I, I tend to agree with uh, Councillor Beauregard uh, when she mentioned that the, uh, the community at large is not really involved in a lot of these, uh, this process that actually takes, takes place. And when I say community at large, I'm talking about those less connected folks in the community, less connected folks in the community. Because uh, there's a perception out there that exists, that there's a very small group of agencies, organizations that get a greater benefit for the usage of the Shaw Center. Not the stadium itself, but the Shaw Center. They hold their events up there on a regular basis. And I like to know whether or not those agencies actually do pay for their meetings that they're holding in the place and the quantities that they're actually paying because I honestly think that it's not a We've held a few events at the Shaw Center, we meaning the Cape Verdean Association, the, 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 some of the minority groups in the community, but we pay our $28, $29 a plate to hold the events there. And I'm quite sure that some of these community organizations are not paying $28, $29 to, to hold their events. Yeah, um, to answer that, you know, one of the things that we've done is we've come in, and first let me just say, not a conference center guy. I've been running minor league baseball teams and stadiums for 20 years or so, so a conference center to me is a little bit new. Um, but the first thing once I kind of gained control of the conference center was to look at it like any business, in, uh, to look at it as you would any business. What are the expenses going out? What are the, ex the revenue coming in? One of the things that I found is, you're right, there were certain groups that were not getting charged room rentals, or there were other deals where there were not room rentals. Now, um, we've put in We've enacted a new protocol at the Shaw Center where as soon as a call comes into the office, 
there is a sheet that we have to do um, to fill out to determine if we would even, if it's worthwhile to even do that. So they have to include a room rental. They have to include what the potential revenue is on food. Then there's an expense side of it, which calculates how much is our food cost, how much are we going to have on wait staff, whatever. If we do not anticipate that being um, greater than a 30 percent um, profit on what that is, there are some of those events that we have passed off. So it's imperative now that we do charge that room rental um, to help us get to that level. So you will see going forward, and we have been for the last six months or so, um, utilizing that sheet and making sure that everybody is paying a room rental. Now some of those may be a little bit different depending on what the event is. Um, you know, just so we can kind of reach to our margins, but we have addressed that, and going forward, everything is made sure that we are making money off of every event that happens in there. See, because the problem I have with this is that I, too, sit on a board, on a couple boards of nonprofit organizations in the community that tend to deal with minority issues. Mm -hmm. And those organizations don't have the availability, as others have had, to use the facilities. Really? Um, I mean, you just, you just basically agreed to what I was saying here, that some folks were being charged, some folks weren't being charged. It seems that every time we used it, we, we paid what, whatever the top, li top of the line uh, asking was, and some of the other groups can kind of have their regular meetings there uh, whenever they choose to. So that's the, uh, that's the issue that some of us have with this particular um, organization, because uh, Mr. Condon mentioned that the motel, uh, motel meal taxes came into play to help pay for the expenses at the Shaw Center. I remember when I, we voted for motel uh, meals taxes in this community, it wasn't told that, oh, by the way, you're voting for to subsidize the Shaw Center. Huh? Mr. Condon, can you uh, just to the microphone, please? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying that it goes to the Shaw Center. I'm saying that you, we've used those funds to help pay for the, to pay back the loan or, 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 or subsidize the, uh, the, the monies associated with the, Shaw, with, the, with the Rocks and Shaw Center. It, it doesn't go to the Rocks or the Shaw Center. The hotel, it's not, first of all, it's not the meals tax. It's the hotel motel tax. And a portion of that is calculated to create a, um, an avoidance of default on the Brockton 21st Century Corporation's loan repayment to the city, but there isn't any cash transaction at all. It's an accounting transaction that says this is the amount of loan payment that would be due. This is the amount that they paid. Let's see what the hotel motel tax was under the formula to see if it's sufficient to, to close the difference, and we do. But it's just a calculation on, um, on the balance sheet. It doesn't, doesn't go to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation or to the Shaw Center or to the Rocks. It's but in a kind I, of I, I heard you saying this earlier that you said that they're actually uh, some, a portion of the uh, motel hotel meals taxes goes towards paying for those expenses. That's why I, not I brought the meals that up. tax, counselor. No, sir. Separate tax. The meals tax is not at all. And the, I'm going to try it again. It's kind of complicated to understand that. But the hotel motel tax is a tax which is looked at when the loan payment comes in and if the loan payment is insufficient to make the amount on the schedule, the city's already received those revenues. There's no money going to the Brockton 21st Century Corporation. What instead happens is we say we will treat the amount of the loan payment which wasn't made in cash as having been paid to the extent that that formula gives us sufficient calculation to do it. And it's a balance sheet transaction, but it doesn't go to the Brockton 21st. It avoids the default on the loan payment. They don't have to make that payment. It's always to this date is for the most part has been interest payment, not principal, uh, because the loan is a mortgage kind of loan where the yearly years are almost entirely interest. And none of that goes to the Brockton Rocks or to the um, uh, Shaw Center or the baseball stadium operation. Well, regardless of you know, what's going to where and why and when, the fact is that when the, uh, motel, when the motel hotel taxes were proposed, they were not proposed to be uh, kept somewhere on a standby to support the Shaw Center and the Rocks. And I'm just, and I'm just saying that because a, a lot of times when we are, when we talk into taxpayers or ratepayers in this community, if we come up to them and say, listen, vote for this because it's going to go to point A to point B, they want to have a greater input in what happens to it through, through their government. That's the reason why I'm bringing that up. Um, and what happens is that it's, it's basically very clear that, uh, I think Mr. Condon said this earlier when the, 
when the rocks first came into play, it was very, uh, the city was energized and a lot of people were involved, but, but it has slowed down somewhat because the city has changed. But one of the things that I notice on a regular basis in our community, in our city, is that we do not evolve with the changes. We do not evolve with the changes. The stadium is used for baseball for, let's say, from May till about September. There's a variety of other sports that's played in the fall and in the spring that could actually be utilized in that stadium for other things. There's soccer uh, tournaments that go on all over the place that we have soccer teams, uh, soccer organizations looking for uh, to rent places to play but that's not available to them because it's never been av made available to them. That it's not available to them. I'm just asking you because there was a soccer game there last year. There was, so a, there was a small little tournament they joined last year. I'm saying there are soccer leagues in this community that play from September on that could very well, if we put together a game plan where we actually we, we, we start evolving in the community and start going beyond that, we can kind of utilize that and create some revenue as we go along. That's what I'm saying. So, Councilor, all these discussions have been uh, a part of our discussion, okay? And everything's on the table. Don't forget, these people are business people. They want to make money. They don't turn people away for the sake of not doing business. As far as your comments about not being welcoming, I will tell you that in the past two years, we've changed the makeup of the board, just as an example, to make it welcoming to that that you're speaking to. Also, this group that we're working with, we're talking very proactively to make sure that we are looking at other opportunities. For example, they had a Brazilian concert, other ethnicity, okay. Um, I believe there's a rodeo that comes to town. I'm not so sure that's to us, but my, my point is, is that we have these discussions. And the other thing I'd like to point out is, is that most of these discussions have come about in the last 10 or 15 years. And there has been representatives from the city council that have been on the 21st Century Corporation as the representative being the president. Many of you have served that. So these discussions have happened. What we need to do is make sure we come to the point where we move forward instead of moving back to move forward. And that's what we're trying to do with this group right here and with you. Because regardless of how you want to look at it, we're partners how you want to cut it up to your constituency, I can tell you that when we go out to the business community, they want to know how friendly our political climate is. That's what they ask us. Just like your co uh, constituents are asking you where the funds are going and how they're being appropriated. The fact is, is the opportunities there with this ball field and this, and this particular venue, okay, to bring people into the city. And sometimes that's more of a cost and sometimes that's less of a cost. But I think we need to move into a direction. You're asking relevant questions. Michael's been on a year. I think we're moving in a great direction. I think the partner that we have that's running it right now is also moving in that direction. And it's going to take time because you know what? It, was, it took time for it to go down. But one thing's for sure, this board is committed to move forward and to make it a success for the city for the city. That's all. We're, we're going to make it a success because that's our passion. Our board is very energized. By the way, we have business people on this board that can be doing other things other than looking at the numbers, being proactive, wondering where our money's going and how effectively it's been, putting together this plan with the stadium and understanding what it is that we need to do with the uh, construction issues and the maintenance issues. So this is a board that's very proactive and I think the discussion should begin to be proactive. Because everybody here, other than the new councilors, has had this discussion before. No, with all due respect, I mean, the re one of the reasons why I brought up the whole soccer thing is to be proactive and give you the pointers of some things that could be done. But it seems that every time those ideas are, are, are brought forward for some odd reason, it seems like we're, we're being obstructionists, we're not, we're not helping out, we're, we're, we're fighting the business, or. I mean, that's, that's the way it, it, it come across somewhat. And the reason why I brought that to you is that, you know, you've got some possibilities here of at least six months or so where that stadium could be used for something else. But you've got to evolve with the changes in the community. Sitting here complaining about the fact that the city has changed, kids, people aren't following baseball anymore. Well, you know what? If they're not following baseball, they, they're following other sports. And some of the other communities are following other sports. So I think if we somehow put our thinking hats together and come up with a game plan where it's a, it's a 
fair level playing field where everybody's playing for the same from the same level I think it'll be it'll be successful but it has to be available so that it cannot be again kept between a group of friends that want to you know hold their events here you know here and there and they have it basically whenever they feel like it in the other communities or other folks that want to help out this community don't have an equal access to it and that's the reason why I'm bringing that up because I too have, have lived in the city for a long time and I too have been talking about the possibilities of evolving and involving other things at that, Shaw, at, that um, at the Rock Stadium but for some odd reason it goes into deaf ears you telling me this is the first time I'm talking about the possibility of br bringing soccer games to the, to the Rock Stadium? I don't think so. I've been talking about that since the days that I was in the Harrington administration, when you and I have talked about it. You know? Because there's plenty of other opportunities, plenty of concerts, plenty of people that want to bring some ideal stuff in this community, but it, can, it cannot be based on this, what a small group of people decide that that's best for this city when you're forgetting about the greater city. And that's what I'm saying. That's where I disagree. There's not this small group of people that are deciding anything. So I want to know who it is that's been turned away because we've had incredible discussions about trying to have a better use for when baseball may not be the best use. But, I, but I'm going to point something out here. The investor that invested the five, $500,000 into this facility that is our facility, his passion's baseball. That's why he's here. Okay, he's the businessman. And he's also looking at other alternatives. But baseball brought him here. That doesn't mean they're not looking at other areas. Okay, but that's why he's here. So that's the businessman who's passionate about what he's passionate about. And then, you know, Todd can explain to you what their plans are as far as all this other stuff. But I want to know that group of people that you're talking about. Oh, no, I'm going to tell you exactly what the group of people are. Because what happened is that you've got, you're saying that, you know, kudos to the guy that invested $500,000 into this particular facility that's ours. The taxpayers in this community have been investing heavily in that stadium since, two, since it was built. So the taxpayers have been uh, investing in that stadium as well. And they too deserve the opportunity to use the stadium on a regular basis, no matter where they come from. No matter where they come from. Okay. So the reason why I'm saying this is that you said we want to be partners. I'm giving you some partners um, advice in a ways to do this. But it ha the thinking has to change somewhat. It cannot be, let's do business as usual. Hopefully somebody will come knocking on our doors and say who we are. Because that's not the way it actually works. We, uh, we hold events in this community all the time. But it has to be a little more forthcoming, a little more on welcoming in a way to understand that the changes actually have happened within this community. You know? And we're willing to do our part to support, but th the rocks and their leadership on their side has to do their part as well, too. Well, let me just say that since I've taken over, we have done, in my opinion, everything that we could to try and accommodate. Last year, we had a Brazilian show. We had a Haitian peace festival. We had a Jamaican concert. We had a uh, scheduled hip-hop concert. So we touched every four um, you know, demographics or four different demographics within that. There is not been anybody that I can think of that has come to visit me and said I want to do this and I flat out said no because of whatever group they were associated with. We will take any business that we think makes sense that is a profitable job. Now if somebody comes to me and says hey we want to do this event but you're going to lose a thousand dollars on it, I'm not taking it. If you, I would be more than happy. I grew up playing soccer. I played soccer all through my college days. I still am a huge soccer fan. I watch every Saturday the English Premier League, whatever. I would be more than happy to put soccer on that field. When we did it last year, it's a little bit small, the way that the field is configured. We're about 90 yards long and about 30 wide, so it's a little bit tough to fit it in there. We'd have to do some major reconstruction, I believe, to make it a full regulation soccer field. Um, but I'm completely open to it. Um, at any point, we'd love to have a conversation with you or whoever that would be that would um, be able to help us do that and make it a revenue-generating event. I, I have one last question, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the stadium actually, um, both the stadium and the Shaw Center had uh, these naming rights. Campanelli, that's the reason why his name is on there, because he, they put some monies. Yeah, the Campanelli is not, was not naming rights. It was a, my understanding, and I, I could be, it was a gift. Yes. So they, it was a, out of tribute to Mr. Campanelli that they put his name on it because he gave the, the gift that made it possible. Um, but there was no naming rights. And, and, and as a matter of fact, last year 
right as I came to B21, uh, the conversation was being had about exploring, uh, attracting someone for the naming rights, and we kind of backed away from it because it wasn't materializing like we thought it would. So we, we've got to build up the product so we can sell the naming rights to someone. Someone's, everybody wants to be part of a winner, you know. I don't care who it is, XYZ company wants their name hanging on something that is significant. What about the Shaw Center? Shaw's, yeah, yeah it goes to... So it was a 20-year agreement signed back when the stadium was originally done in 2001 when it opened. So the, the Shaw, Shaw's has the rights to that name until 2021. Do you, do you, any of you guys know exactly the amounts that these, uh, either the gifts or the... Uh, Two million for the gift, one million for the naming right. One, one million from Campanelli? Two million from Campanelli, one million from Shaw's. One million for Shaw's, okay. Good. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council Lally. Well, I uh, want to thank you guys for being here, and I want to congratulate you on your uh, endurance. Um, I just have one question. It goes back to you're talking about, you know, you're in talks with a couple of businesses, you know, and you can't really divulge much on that right now, but what is the biggest holdup for new businesses? What is that, that obstacle that you find the most that prevents them from moving forward and from settling in Brockton and becoming paying taxpayers? It's the, it's the match of the property to their needs. Brockton has an older building stock and even the mill buildings, because most of them are wooden, aren't, aren't, uh, cannot be repurposed easily for manufacturing. Um, today's manufacturing heavily robotic, and, and when they're not robotic, they're still the, the equipment's very heavy, so the type of buildings that are needed for that um, that have to be 21st century technology. The, the building, the envelope of the building itself, um, and a lot of them have height needs, the interior height. So even some of the buildings we have don't necessarily have that 18 or 20 foot height from within. So and they want to be close to the highway, they want, there's other things. And, and, and we have competition. Avon, the Bridgewaters, Easton, Stoughton, everybody's, everybody's in the economic development business. And one of, the, one of the thoughts I have is how do we look at doing that more regionally so that we're not competing with each other. That Brockton's the centerpiece of a region that if it makes sense someone coming in to be close by in any one of the other communities, those are still going to be Brockton residents that have the opportunity to get jobs. So that's what we have to, that's the balancing act, and it's always been. I've been doing this for more than 30 years, and it's, it is a balancing act. But sometimes, I remember the, when I first started, and it was, we talked about how communities compete with each other, and it was, they said it was like a pack of German shepherds fighting over a chicken wing sometimes. And we try to, we've evolved as economic development beyond that. We still have a little ways to go. But Brockton, the, the, to answer that question is, we have to figure out what the building mix is and how to do that match. And we're working on that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Barnes, let's keep these follow-up questions kind of brief and quick. It's been a long night. Yes, I understand. Um, but I, I did want some things that came up actually uh, caused me to think of some of these other questions. So, Mr. Condon, with the Hotel tax situation, when it is um, evaluated that the, the bill is not paid and it's determined that that money goes, goes to, uh, I guess, make up the shortfall, does that exhaust that complete revenue stream no. each time? No, you, you see, you're not understanding what happens there. No. Basically, the hotel motel tax is a revenue to the city and it's credited to the city as revenue. It isn't budgeted as an expenditure item. It never has been. It wasn't back in 86 or whenever it was that the city first adopted it. It wasn't in 2000 when we began this project. But what it was, was a revenue that was coming in that was creating surplus revenue for, for free cash. Mm -hmm. When the project began, we created a document which said to the extent that the loan repayment from Brockton 21st is not sufficient to meet the schedule, the city won't declare them in default so long as the amount by which they're short is capable of being uh, covered 
by the amount of hotel motel tax that was received by the city in the prior year, so it's already been booked as revenue. We don't give it to the corporation. We just say, here's the calculation, 90% of the first 500,000, 50% of everything after 500,000. It gives you about 575,000 as a potential pool. So if their loan payment is short, we just look at that potential pool and we do an accounting transaction on the city's books saying that that amount of the loan tre is treated as if it has been paid, even though it wasn't paid. So that's what's happening with the hotel motel tax. Okay, so can that be used for something else? Yes. Can we go forward and allocate yes. that for something else? Yes, and we do. We do budget it, not in full, because we've continued to try to use it to generate free cash. I, I want to tell you something else on that. This is a little bit off the topic, but if the city budgets all of its revenues to 100%, and realizes all of its revenues to 100%, mm -hmm. you're going to not have the same kind of reserves being created which are used in subsequent budgets in case you don't generate enough, enough revenue. So not all of our revenues except for the property tax and state aid are budgeted to 100%. Most are budgeted at a percent less than that to create free cash. We've been budgeting about $125,000 of the uh, hotel motel tax every year and a portion of the payment that comes in from the Brockton Rocks as well. So it is being used, it's just not being used to the full extent. Okay, so. um, and just one thing about the events and things that are going on. I know we've kind of exhausted this, but I, I just, for my own self. Um, if baseball fell apart or, or it really hasn't been um, our thing, somebody said, you know, since 2007 it started to kind of fall off with participation and, and people being interested. And also the recession. The main problem that happened here isn't the demographic change in the city. Oh, I think that's had an effect because, you know, people's interests are what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, biggest thing that happened was the recession came along and it's a discretionary purchase for people to go to a ball game and their revenues really fell off as a result of that 2007, 2008, 2009 recession. Okay, and I guess maybe I should, I should ask Todd then. So with that happening and if people's interests have waned for whatever reason, whether they don't have the disposable income or they just don't care anymore, um, have we stayed at the party a little too long with the baseball thing, I guess is my, my question, because you'd actually mentioned too, Michael, about um, the idea of maybe selling it and doing something else with it or having some other kind of thing or getting another tenant, some other kind of thing like that. You mentioned something like that a while ago, but is that, is that something still in play or are we just really going to be headstrong and are we married to this whole baseball idea when actually the people that do attend or they used to attend, I've heard you know, a few years ago, it's just like it's just not fun anymore. It's kind of boring. It's long. The games are long. And, and it's, of course now too, we don't have the minor league league anymore. The league dissolved. So we have you know, these college kids and I appreciate them coming to want to show their wares, but we're not scouters. So we can't really do anything but you know, kind of cheer them on in, in the stands. So um, is there any idea to do anything else with that? Or are we just really headstrong about baseball? Uh, we are actually very headstrong on baseball. Um, the business model that we are presented with, with the Futures Collegiate Baseball League, is in my opinion one of the best business models of baseball in a long time. If you remember, and I don't know how much you know, but in 2002, when the Rocks came into play, about 10 years prior to that, there was a huge introduction of independent baseball, which the Rocks were a part of. Independent mm -hmm. baseball means that you paid your own salaries, you paid your own workers' comp, you inherited a number of major expenses that um, for a lot of clubs, similar to Pawtucket, Lowell, whoever that may be, um, don't have to carry those expenses because they are carried by the major league affiliated club. So over the course from 2002 and, you know, as Mr. Condon said, 2007, 2008, you saw not just the Rocks, but a number of um, minor league baseball clubs fail, go away. Mm -hmm. um, the Can-Am League, you know, for the most part is, for the most part, non-existent. They've right. got four teams, I believe, now. They're trying to keep it going. Um, I've been going, I've been doing this for about 20 years. Like I said, I think with this business model, the players actually pay to play for us. Um, it's like a glorified AAU league. So take, you know, $100,000 off your expense budget right off the top. Workers' comp is what really got in and I think um, helped to damage independent baseball. I don't know about the Brock situation itself, but in 1998 when independent baseball really got kicking, um, everybody, you know, all these teams 
had a workers' comp policy the first time it ever came in. It was like $25,000. This is like, this is great. And then guys start claiming injuries and hamstrings, and guys start going to Puerto Rico, whatever. Next thing you know, these workers' comp claims have climbed up to the quarter of a million, if not more, dollar mark. And it really put a huge hamper on those businesses. So by having college players come in, we don't have that expense either. So we are able to keep our expense base that much lower. I truly believe and I think that we will start to see signs of an increase in baseball um, attendance going back up. We have put a concerted effort on a um, proactive sales um, effort into groups. We have already booked 22 um, schools from out of Brockton itself. I believe seven Brockton schools, so a total of 30 schools in our new reading and fitness program that will bring in a projected anywhere 250 to 400 people additional on any given night. So we are starting to see the fruits of our labor over the last two years starting to develop on the sales side of things. And we're doing this with just two people. Um, you know, so it is going to take some time. And I like to explain this is when we came in here two and a half years ago, this was a hostile baseball city. Um, and quite frankly, it's still to the, you know, it is. Um, people have been burned by non-payments. I hear all of you guys talking about um, the deals that went bad, you know, from the very beginning. Um, you know, we hope um, to, to build this thing and get it back going again. And we've had to fight a lot of those battles, and those haven't been easy. But like I said, it is starting to come around, and people are starting to buy tickets. Our ticket sales are about 50% up over where they were last year. Um, and a lot of these groups that are coming in and that we've chose to focus on is instead of going out and saying, all right, let's um, get as many season ticket holders as we can, that doesn't do me any good. My season tickets only cost $100. You know, I can sell 5,000 of those, and what does that really get me? It doesn't get me all that because most of those season ticket holders don't show up for all 28 games. They're only there for 10, 11, or 12, so I've got an empty seat. But if I can increase my ticket base by bringing in an additional 300 to 400, if not more people a night, based off of these group programs that we've put together, now we're talking and now we're starting to create a demand for our tickets. So yes, I believe that baseball is the way to go. I think that in two to three years, the baseball business um, will be profitable. Um, when you separate our two businesses, the baseball business um, almost broke even this year. Um, so we're starting to see, and that's a very large increase over where we were um, in 2014. With the $600,000 deficit? That's correct. Okay, so this is a different business model than that one. Absolutely, very much so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Council Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a couple quick follow-ups relative to the uh, to the concerts. Um, I spoke with uh, with Jack Units, the former mayor, and, and of course he was the former president of, of the Rocks a few years ago. And I asked him why initially there was some really successful people coming. Right? I mean, we had Def Leppard, Brian Adams, Jack Johnson, Willie Nelson, Bob Dylan. There was a lot of people. Here. Salt and Pepper even came. I saw them. Um, but but. But what I was told is that the distance proximity-wise to Mansfield and even Cohasset prohibits, under the contract, prohibits top-notch entertainers to come to Brockton. Is that, is that still true? Is that why we're not oh, seeing... It's a standard within contracts. And it's interesting because with the casino, we did a... Uh, there was a term, a, a live agreement, I think it was, with the, the Gaming Commission. Yeah, impact live entertainment venue, some, um, and that was part of the negotiation with the, with the casino developers that that clause would not appear in their contracts that those entertainers could be wooed by the stadium to do it an additional date uh, or the conference center. So a comic, let's say, that's appearing at the casino on a Friday night. It's possible that we could have them at the conference center on a, on a Saturday night or a Sunday. Yeah, but um, I'm talking about existing venues, existing yeah. venues, not projections. Like, so, so South Shore Music Circus and Cohasset, sure. or Great Woods, or whatever they call it yeah. now. So is that still, is that still detrimental it's, it, it impact definitely, to It's definitely one of the issues that we have. Um, I really look at it as more of a landscape change in the concert business. Live Nation 10, 12 years ago wasn't as big as it was. Now they control all the acts and they control the majority of the venues here in Boston. Um, so when most of these acts do come through the Boston and they're routing through, um, Live Nation scoops them up. A lot of times because they, they will pay, say, um, I don't know, Jimi Hendrix, $4 million a year, basically a salary, and they will then say, um, all right, you have to play 32 shows, we'll tell you when to be there and where you have to go. 
So they've got no control over that. Now what we have done, and I've been very proactive over the last year and a half, is actually go out and solicit as many promoters that I can possibly find. And we have been working very closely with a number of those that are able to get some of those acts through various different means around and away through Live Nation. Um, you know, I anticipate some really big shows happening there in the coming years. Um, there's potential for even one this year um, that may possibly even be announced here in the next month or so. We're still trying to iron out some of the details. Um, so we're really excited about the prospects and we're also pairing those with two Brazilian shows this year. I've got the Haitian Peace Fest coming back this year. I've also teamed up with Rich Capiello to do a couple of outdoor MMA events as well. So we're trying to really build um, the events and that's another reason that the baseball is so perfect here. It's only 28 games. I've got from, you know, Memorial Day until the end of October to put other outside events in there, which is perfect, like you're saying, Councilor Rodriguez, to put a soccer program or something together in the fall. I'm all for it. So, so my wife and I were up there a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Neighborhood Health Center, and I saw the Michael Dutra ad. Now, I, he's strictly Sinatra guy, and, and we saw him at Thorny Lee a few years ago, okay. and it wasn't 100 bucks a person. So I, I think that price point, this is my humble opinion, I think you priced out for Brockton, 200 bucks for my wife and I to see Michael Dutra sing Summer Wind. That's, that's not going to happen. So I, I just, I saw that. Now my last two questions, Mr. Chairman, is it, yeah, it, was, it was mentioned initially um, that these deficiencies uh, were brought forward to the board from the tenant, EMC. And as an attorney, I've I represented many clients that have come to me either is a commercial or residential tenancies. And what I've always recommended to them is you always have, in, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you always have the ability to do a holdback, right? Don't pay your rent, right? Has that happened relative to this? Are we, are we, did we have any arrears relative to the tenant not paying because of these deficiencies? Because I would think that that would be a, a plausible thing. Yeah, in 15, there was some money that they spent that we're, we're working with them to do the offset of what they spent and some of the rent. Um, in 16, it's paid to date. Right, it might be paid to date, but had they paid every single month or did they have any holdbacks? This, this year? In 16, the past. Yes. In, in the past, In the yes, 16, they, they did. They held back because they, they spent out of pocket some of that 500000 that, that John alluded to. Yeah. Some of it was like 50000 of items that they started to that they needed to that needed to be addressed, they addressed them, and we're working with them to, okay. to check the office. But as of tonight, it's current. If for 16, it's current. Okay. And then my last thing is, I did go through this, Mr. Marion, quickly, and it does have breakdowns relative to a summary of uh, revenue per event and supplemental income. But what I was hoping to get from you guys um, is a comparison, like a, almost like a financial statement, like a ledger, your income, your expenses, and we can compare like 13, 14, 15, something like that. If we could do that, that'd be great. Thank you. And just let me, let me, I, have, I can't leave without talking about the, the Strictly Sinatra. That's a B21 event. It's meant as a, as a revenue generator for B21. So that's why the price point of $100, it's similar to everybody else's fundraisers in the city that get $100. Yeah, I, I didn't know what it was for. I'm yes. just, I, I think I spent 100 bucks for the both of us just a couple of years get dinner. ago. But, you but get dinner with it. So yeah, but it's at the Shaw's It's at the Shaw's thing. Councilor Fowell, when that lease is up, did at the time that we signed that, and given the history of having some unpaid water and sewer bills that are quite considerable, did we create an, did we ask them to give a deposit, set up an escrow account to hold during the term of the lease so that we wouldn't fall into that situation again? I don't believe that there is an escrow set up. I wasn't privy to the negotiations of that lease. I will say that um, based on the events that we bring in, we give back a portion, I believe it's 30 percent, Michael, on all outside events that go to pay off the previous $200,000 water bill. Um, so we are trying, making an effort even to pay something that we didn't even um, bring in ourselves. Uh, so we're trying to be good neighbors that way and look at that as possibly a way to alleviate an escrow for doing so, but we also will pay our bills. All right, and I guess the last question, and I don't know whether it would go to Mr. Marion or, or Mr. Gallerani, but when we negotiated the lease agreement, we arrived at $135,000. Was that based on the financials they presented to you? That seemed to be a reasonable amount to charge based on the revenues they're bringing in? And if so, what are the annual revenues at the conference center and the, and the Rock Stadium? Have those numbers too? The, the numbers, their, their revenue from the events is in that report. 
Um, I, we took a quick, again, my apologies, and I took a quick look at it. If it's in there, I just would like to reserve the right to perhaps email you or send you a letter and asking for clarification. Yes. No problem. Thank you very much. You want to address the other? Thank, Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Ranieri. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. We're, we'll be on the seventh inning stretch, no doubt. Um, but any case, running, whatever. Any case, um, I, I do want to make one comment, and when it comes back to concerts, I have a great, great concern of any concerts that are held in that facility. And I'll bring it back to 2004 and 2005 when there was a Brazilian concert held there, very well attended, tremendous people, 50, 60, 70 dollar tickets. Noise was outstanding for the neighborhood. It was so loud that they were calling me every five minutes. So I do want you to know that when there's a concert to be held there, I want to know everything about it, when, I want to see how the place is set up. And I'm not just saying this just in foolishness. I'm the councilor or the mayor of Ward 3, and I have to answer to the people of Embraer Street, Brea Circle, Ash Street, Gordon Street, and, and I don't want them not to be known that there's going to be a concert held in that stadium. Because of that, I already have on the books a noise, a noise ordinance in regards to decimal levels that you have to meet. I'm not saying no not to hold a concert. I'm not saying no not to bring in revenue. But I want to make sure that I am every bit a part of it. Because that last time, or that one and only time, I believe, that when we had it, it was just it was terrible. Terrible, so bad that I went over there and indicated that I want to know where the plug is, and someone told me you have no right. I said, I'll pull the plug. So I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just trying to tell you. It, it's very, very important to me because it's important to my people within that neighborhood. Um, and that was on a 4th of July night, and those people were just, just surrounded by noise having their own uh, you know, 4th of July festival so, um, or event in their own yard. So I just want to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before Councilor Razak finishes up, I just want to make note uh, one thing that uh, as a former representative to the board and a current representative to the board, I can tell you that the business people on this board put in ungodly time and effort and ex expertise for this board uh, and are doing a job that they didn't ask for. And uh, the idea that uh, as the board members and past board members, I can tell you that the expertise of Mr. Mary and Mr. Osborne, Joe Casey when I was there before, the city could not afford what these people do f f for the 21st Century Corp and for the city, and I just want to thank you for your service. Councilor Razak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'd like to thank you also for, to the board members. Thank you for being here tonight and answering our questions. Um, I think we touched on a lot of different um, aspects of what, what you do. Um, to follow up with my colleagues, I know Council Sullivan requested um, financial statements or if we can get them for the Shaw Center in the Rocks, that would be great. If we can get them a little bit in advance so we have time to look at them, prepare our questions. Um, we'll, and thank you again for the information that you sent us this week. What I'd like to see is you come back possibly in April so we can, as Mr. Marion said, we are partners in this and we're about moving forward. We're about business. This is not about putting people on the spot. It's about working together. And I'll be honest, since I've been on the council, this is the first time that we've had the full board um, here in front of us, so I was able to question it. So I appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to working together to move forward. So thank you again. Thank you. Do you want to make that yep. a motion? That they a come motion back? to recommend. Second. To you recommend or to ask them to come back in April? To ask them to come back in April. Second. Uh, I'd ask you to make a motion for them to come back to the second finance committee in April. Second Finance Committee in April, which I don't have the date in front of me. I believe it will be Tuesday night the 19th. I believe the 18th is a holiday. Holiday, the Patriots correct. Day. So the motion is made and seconded uh, to ask these people to come back on the Finance Committee meeting of April 19th. Give them time to get those, those items to us and that the councilors can look at them. And it will be quicker that night. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine. Resolved that the city's mayor and solicitor come before the finance committee to provide a status update and to discuss reacquiring the real property located at 226 Main Street, commonly known as the Ganley Building, that was conveyed by the city for nominal consideration to the Commonwealth for purposes of using the property as a college collaborative. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, City Solicitor. Mr. Chairman. Councilors, just before, I just want to let you know that uh, 
Attorney uh, Nazrella uh, communicated with me today and had a previous engagement and could not come tonight. I believe Mr. Conan and Mr. Kaplan should be able to answer any questions. Well, with that That's being said, uh, again, I filed this uh, and it was signed on by the Wood 3 Counselor, and, and, I, and I appreciate the mayor being here, and I will ask him if he could humbly give us an update. Uh, for those that are new to the council, uh, I filed and Dennis uh, co-sponsored this um, exact same resolve uh, early last fall. The mayor came before us and gave us an update. Um, and at that time, um, we said we would postpone it. It died with the legislative session. Um, we had told the mayor at that time we'd give him till March because he was having some conversations. Um, with that being said, I do want to get an update from the, the mayor, but I am going to ask to postpone this uh, after that because I do want the city attorney here because I want to see what legal steps we can start uh, to, to, to regain and get it conveyed back to us. With that being said, Mr. Mayor, if you could give us an update. Sure. Good evening, Councillor. Good evening, Councillors. Mr. Evening. President. I didn't think you were ever going to get to me. Uh, I, I guess it's a two-part question in the resolve, Councillor, so I'll, I'll start with the second half first because that's what you just alluded to in terms of reacquiring the building. Um, quite frankly, I don't have a great interest in reacquiring the building right now at this point in time, and that's because the building is in horrible condition and most likely is going to have to be taken down whether the college collaborative comes or not. And uh, our building commissioner estimates the cost of that demo at about 400000 could possibly go as high as 500000 depending what they find once they start taking the building apart. So I think that it's actually to the city's advantage right now to allow DCAM to retain it for the time being so we can address the issue of when is the building going to come down and who's going to pay for it. Uh, even if the college proposal or the college plan that was approved by Governor Patrick but now not funded by Governor Baker had been on schedule, the building was coming down. All they were doing was going to try to preserve some of the facade. Everything else was coming down and in essence a brand new building was being built behind the old facade. Um, I'd be happy to, let me just, Nick, do you have those letters? I'll be happy to share a piece of correspondence with the council um, from fairly recently, but in February, I think on February 22nd, I did put the DCAM commissioner on notice regarding the unsafe conditions in the building um, so that we can give them an opportunity to let us know what do they plan to do with the building and when do they plan to do it. So uh, this is uh, the first step in us, perhaps, one of the scenarios uh, is compelling DCAM is the owner of the unsafe building to take it down. So do we have an interest in reacquiring the site at some point? Uh, if in fact a college collaborative building is not built there? Absolutely. But I don't think it makes any sense for, for us, Councillor, to um, to push the issue of reacquiring the building right now uh, in light of the fact that we know it's going to be a very costly demo that we can have paid for by the state rather than by the Brockton taxpayers. In terms of any future use of that site, if it's not a college collaborative, uh, nothing could be done by the state. There was a lot of, um, I think false speculation, oh, the state's going to put the charter school in there, and I heard that quite a few times. In the MOU between the city and DCAM, in which we did convey that property for one dollar, uh, there's language that says that DCAM must use the property specifically for the benefit of Bridgewater State University, Massasoit, and UMass Boston. So anything other than a project that involves those colleges coming downtown would require our approval. The state cannot use the property for any other purpose other than that. So exactly how uh, is this going to play out over the next few months? I don't think we exactly know yet. What I do know is that at some point in the pretty near future, the building is going to need to come down. It's going to be a very expensive demo and I would prefer to have the state pay for it. Um, in, in terms of the first half of your question, and I don't mean to 
turn my back to you guys. Uh, in terms of the first half of the question, there certainly has been uh, an evolution over the last few months. So as you said, for the council members that are new that were not here last year at the time we originally struck the deal uh, with the Governor Patrick administration, uh, this past, I guess it was spring now, late spring, uh, the Baker administration put a hold on all higher ed capital projects that had not broken ground yet. That had a huge impact on Brockton because in fact Brockton had two higher ed capital projects that had not broken ground. The Allied Health Sciences building from Massasoit that was scheduled to be built on the former Christo site, which is now a parking lot I guess, um, and the College Collaborative building which was scheduled to be uh, built at the site of the current Ganley building. Uh, the administration's position was that all of these higher edge projects, including Brockton's too, uh, would go through a review process that we've gone through for quite some time with them now, and that perhaps some of those projects may still get funded, but certainly the governor made it clear in his opinion that the state did not have the financial wherewithal to fund all the projects that had been approved by the prior administration. Certainly very troubling news for Brockton with two major projects uh, already not just on the drawing board but had begun. Uh, obviously the Christos restaurant had been taken down, that property was acquired, the building was raised and in terms of even the downtown college collaborative, DCAM had spent $300,000 on the architects. So both projects had had some money spent on them but they were both put on hold. What, where I believe we are today is I believe that um, one of the projects will get funded. I believe it will be the Allied Health Sciences building. Um, but all indications are that the administration does not want to build it at the Christos site. That uh, this administration is only willing to fund it if it's built across the street as part of the main campus at Massasoit. Um, over the past couple months, uh, I have been lobbying along with our state legislative delegation, working very closely with them. Uh, we've been lobbying the administration to look at the option of killing two birds with one stone and if they're only going to build one of the buildings, then let's take that Allied Health Sciences building from Massasoit and build that downtown on the shovel-ready site that, that DCAM already owns. We've already, you know, we've allocated parking, we've arranged public transportation. It's a site that's ready to go. And I think there's been some willingness on the part of the administration to look at that. Uh, our pitch to them is pretty simple. You can kill two birds with one stone. Massasoit can get their Allied Health Sciences building. Downtown Brockton can get the state college presence that we deserve, that so many other cities in this Commonwealth have and Brockton doesn't. And the governor can complain, to, uh, the governor can proclaim to be fiscally conservative and accomplish two missions with one building and theoretically save the taxpayers $20 million. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think there's some sentiment for it. However, in our meetings with Dr. Wall, he's dead set against the idea. And our state members, members of our state legislative delegation have met with Dr. Wall. I've met with Dr. Wall. And to this point, he's indicated that he does not want to bring the Allied Health Sciences building downtown. He wants to keep it on the main campus. Um, so I am beating every drum I can. I would certainly appreciate the support of the council uh, in trying to convince Dr. Wall uh, that the right thing to do for Brockton is to bring that beautiful Allied Health Sciences building downtown. We went up and visited Lawrence where no, two years ago, two and a half years ago, Northern Essex Community College opened an Allied Health Sciences building in the heart of downtown Lawrence, 12 miles from their main campus. And it's a beautiful facility that's already made a big difference in that section of downtown Lawrence. So I think there's a model that shows it can work. And in our case, the building would only be a mile and a half from Massasoit's main campus with parking on both sides, public transportation, connecting. I know when my daughter was at UMass Amherst, 
She had classes on that campus that were more than a mile and a half apart. It's not like it's a long distance and really separating it from the rest of the campus. So um, I think where we're at today is that there's still no final decision um, announced, but I think the landscape has changed to the point that we're now advocating Dr. Wall to bring, assuming that he gets the funding, to bring that Allied Health Sciences building to the downtown and put it at the site of the Ganley building. Thank you for that update, Mr. Mayor. I, again, I, I, I applaud you for uh, putting them on notice about the unsafe conditions. What troubles me, um, and, and I'll be blunt about it, is, I mean, over at Christos now, it, like you said, it's a parking lot, right? And I can just envision them taking down the Ganley building. They're the owners of the property. Right. And at the core of the city, coming down Belmont Street, we're going to have an empty, vacant lot there. I just, I can see that happening. And, and again, I feel that, and I'm only one of 11, but I feel like the, the council and the city uh, was really sold false goods. And again, it was at the end of when Deval Patrick was leaving. Uh, but if we look at, at, at Charlie Baker, he hasn't been a friend of Brockton recently. And again, I, I'm very concerned about how aesthetically that's going to look. And, and again, we were told a certain thing, you were told a certain thing, and it hasn't come to fruition. So again, I, I appreciate you coming here tonight and waiting <laughs> and <laughs> giving us an update. I Sorry. do want to ask uh, Attorney Nezzarella, uh, I have some legal questions yep. I want to ask relative to the MOU and some of the verbiage in there. I, 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 again, I'm just very fearful, and I know a lot of the councils are very fearful, and I know you are, Mr. Mayor, of, of, of what that can be now, because we can't control our own destiny there. And if, if Dr. Wall isn't going to agree to that, and if, if the Baker administration doesn't want to put an ally at the main entrance of Massasoit, they want to put it on the campus, I think they're going to be far-fetched to say, okay, we want to put it miles away in the core of the city. I like the idea. I just I have some trepidations about that. But with that being said, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to send it back to you. Well, and, could, uh, I, could I just follow yeah. up on your comment, uh, Mr. President? Yeah, um, so I share your concern, Counselor. And believe me when I tell you, on numerous occasions, I have asked this administration if they want their hallmark in downtown Brockton to be a vacant lot at the end of Belmont Street on Main Street. So I remind them of that all the time. I think that I'm not the solicitor, but I think the solicitor and, and Rob May, who were both involved in uh, developing uh, the transfer of the building uh, to the state, will tell you, if it's not being used for those colleges, then the state can't do anything else with it without us agreeing to it. So I think we do still maintain some leverage. I think uh, in the scenario that if they do not build a college building at the site of the Ganley building, I think what we would be looking to do is to have DCAM incur all of the expenses of the demo, get that to a nice, clean, developable lot, and then we'll press the state to return it to the city where I think uh, it could become an, another important piece of our uh, urban revitalization plan for the downtown and could be identified as another future development site that the city would then at that point control. So I know that um, Rob May will be in front of you in the not too distant future presenting both the downtown action strategy and the urban revitalization plan. But as you look at that, that's going to identify half a dozen key properties in the downtown for, um, for redevelopment. And I think that in that scenario you described, we would press the issue to get back control of the property so that it could at least become part of our redevelopment plans for the downtown. I don't think any of us intends to sit idly by and watch the, the state sit on a vacant lot in downtown, nor do I think at the end of the day is that really in their best political interests either. I, I don't think so. So um, I think we do need to get pa past this a uh, very expensive demo and make sure that we've got the state paying for that and not the Brockton residents. And then we sit down with the state and, and figure out what the highest and best future use for that property is. And if they're not prepared to bring another proposal forward, I think we will insist on having them return the property to us so that we can oversee its redevelopment. Mr. Mayor, was there, in that MOU, was there any reversion language? So, so in essence, you have to ask the solicitor. Yeah. What I do know as a layman is that there was some language that specifically referenced that the only use for the 
property by the state would be for the benefit of the three of colleges. The colleges. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Ian Erie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. How are we Good evening, Councillor. And I just want to make a, a quick comment uh, in regards to this issue as well. I did sign on with Councillor Sullivan, as I did when I was standing as uh, Council President. And um, as he alluded to, and you, and you have as well, my greatest concern is the same fact that I, I would be very concerned if DCAM came in, took a building down, and left us with a cavity. That is my greatest concern. I can recall before the courthouse got built, how the Amy's building came down and we were left with a wall there with air elevator shafts hanging off the side of it for a good long time until, and I think it was Mayor Fowler who even came in and had that little mess straightened up. But that's my biggest concern is seeing something like that. But, but I feel um, you're out there doing what you should be doing by putting them on notice, by also indicating to them the, the safety factor of the, of the building. And uh, I think it's us as even a council now too, and even when I do run into Dr. Wall, I will even have my own conversation with him because I think it's important that something goes in there to what we were trying to do. I, I also agree with uh, the council. I think we all ran into this fast and furious when, when Governor Patrick was cleaning his desk and we knew we could do something and he was gonna you know, give us something but at the same time, administration changed, and I think that's what threw us out a little bit of a curve. Well, so. and the only thing I would modify that, Councillor, is uh, we were working with the Patrick administration for over a year uh, to get that project approved. So it's not, okay. uh, it would not be fair to portray it as something that the governor was doing in his final days, like giving out pardons or something. That's a project that we'd had a working group of the three universities, the city, uh, our partners in the state had been working hard and meeting regularly for a little over a year uh, at that point. So I, certainly we were all aware of the clock. We were all aware that there was an election coming and it made sense to try to close the deal with the current administration uh, and, and that was the goal. And I think our thinking at the time was if we could advance the ball far enough down the field uh, before there was a change in administration, then we could maybe get the project past the point of no return. Clearly, we didn't get the ball that far down the field. We did get them to, to spend the 300000 for the first set of architectural drawings. Uh, they did acquire the property from us, but um, it, honestly, when you look at the Allied Health Sciences building at Christos, that project was even a little further uh, down the field and they pulled the plug on that one also. They actually pulled the plug on all the higher ed capital projects at the time. So uh, it's, it's not a perfect scenario, but I don't think it's a hard decision to say that if the building is unsafe and it's got to come down and it's between having the state pay half a million or the city pay half a million, then we want the state to pay the half a million. No, and, and, I, and, and I don't disagree with anything. I, I'll have my own opinion on Governor Patrick and how he cleaned his desk off. That's my opinion. But okay. In, but in, no, I, I just didn't want to downplay the hard work that had been done for a no, lot of people and, for some time. And that's time fine. And it came under a that. different council, but I can remember it only came to the uh, council at the back end when we found out um, that the real estate committee had to meet fast and furious to make a decision to give a dollar away for a buck. So we got to keep right. that in tone to what was brought but to the Honestly, council Councillor, I'd give it to him for a buck again right now, even without and the promise of the new college, because it's a half a million dollar demo that we would be paying for and, right and, now. And you know something? The only one that ever paid attention to that building was the former council from Ward 1, Dr. Greg Miller, who finally coerced the person that owned it to put the new windows in. Cause it should have been torn down before you, Linda Belzotti, and Jim Harrington were mayor, to be truthful with you. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, to be truthful with you. It's alluded yeah. to in that letter, but, but in the, any case. the roof has been gushing water into the building for years. And even since um, the state uh, engineers and, and the architects toured it, you know, a year and a half ago, it's continued to deteriorate to the point that the building commissioner won't even bring anyone inside the building without them signing a hold harmless agreement um, because we feel it's unsafe. So, you know, it's not a perfect situation, but I still believe it's a much better deal for the city to have the state pay for a very expensive demo rather than the city paying for it. I'm not disagreeing with that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Monahan. Yes, thank you. Just one last thing. Um, I did talk to the mayor this morning on this just for an update on the colleges and he did inform me of, of uh, Mr. Wall as being a deter deterrent to bringing 
that Allied Sci Health Science Building downtown. So <clears throat> I decided to file a resolve to bring him before the council and ask him why or will he consider bringing that downtown because he seems to be the det deterrent of bringing a college downtown as he always has been from day one. I think going back to Balzotti, he has always been a, th a thorn in our side. Uh, he also has been in the leadership role as far as bringing the charter school to Brighton. So I think this man needs to be held accountable. I think we should bring him in and for before us and I think, I hope all of you will sign on to this as well with me. Thank yeah, and I, I am, I'm just, it doesn't require any further comment, but I am sharing with the counselors uh, my letter to Dr. Wall, my re uh, recent letter to Dr. Wall, uh, because, you know, our state legislative delegation has been working very hard with us on this too. I think uh, particularly uh, Representative Cronin has been kind of the point person for the delegation on this project. And, uh, she will tell you, uh, prior to my becoming mayor, that um, when Massasoit very first proposed this idea of the Allied Health Sciences Building, it was originally proposed to, to be located downtown. Uh, and it was only after Massasoit realized the Christos property was going to become available that the plan changed and it, the site changed to Christos. So I think, in essence, what we're really asking Dr. Wall to do is just go back to the original plan and uh, and bring it downtown. Thank you. Thank you. That is council? Yes, thank you. Councilor Barnes. I, I withdraw. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a, a motion to postpone this until uh, uh, the FinCom in April, second FinCom in April. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to postpone this until the second FinCom in April. All those in favor? Opposed? So moved. Thank you for your time, councilors. Thank you. Any other items? Councilor Stadensky. Moment of personal privilege, please, Mr. Chairman. You may. I have two items from Ward 4. Uh, this Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Proof Center Gymnasium at 891 Montello Street, uh, there will be an Easter egg hunt hosted by the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. It will begin at uh, 1 p.m., go to 2 p.m. It's for children uh, up to the age of 12 can participate for free. For us, we have to pay something. I don't know what it'll be, but anyway. Not under 12. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> there's also going to be arts and crafts, egg and spoon races, an egg hunt, free photos with Easter Bunny, and a bunny bag of sweet treats to take home. Last year, I, I went down to the park itself, uh, and it's, it's quite an event, very well done. And uh, we have the main volunteer from the Neighborhood Association, with us, Titan. Uh, just kudos to them for what they do. So it's 1 p.m. Saturday uh, at the Fruth Gymnasium, which is the old uh, St. Margaret's Gymnasium at 891 Montello Street. The second item involves a meeting hosted uh, by uh, Mr. May of the Planning Department, uh, Wednesday, March 30th at 6.30 p.m. in the meeting rooms of the First Evangelical Lutheran Church at the corner of Main and East Nilsen Streets. Uh, what's going on is they are looking for public input on the improvements that people would like to see as part of the rena renovation of the George E. Keith Park, which is at the corner of Main and Plain Street and uh, Montello Street. It's, uh, it's a fantastic little park, uh, and you can see it real well. It's been manicured nicely. And this also is an item that was funded, uh, the enhancement of the park was funded under a grant. Uh, once again, kudos to the group down there. So uh, two, two good events happening. That's going to be on March 30th at 6.30 p.m., the second one, this Saturday for the East Day Run, 1 p.m. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, through you to, through you to Council Stadinsky. Uh, what, what was the age that uh, was free to get into the Easter egg hunt? No, no Council of Lally jokes. Oh, come on. <laughs> Well, he can get him I'm free. Trying to get some, he's trying to help me get some free candy here. <laughs> Tom, I Any think they issues? might let you in for free, too, by the way. <laughs> Any other issues? Have a happy Easter, everyone. We're adjourned. Thank you.